A warm Wednesday night for baseball from Florence, Kentucky as the Evansville Otters take on the Florence Yalls in game two of a three game series outside of the Queen City of Cincinnati. Good evening everyone and welcome to Thomas Moore Stadium in Florence, Kentucky just south of the Ohio River and Cincinnati for Evansville Otters baseball on the Evansville Otters digital network. I'm Griffin Epstein joining you this evening under overcast skies and high humidity but no rain expected this evening and the Otters trying to bounce back after their comeback fell just short last night in a 6-4 to four loss. The Otters put together a good offensive showing over the last few innings. They scored two runs in the seventh, two in the eighth and put the tying run in scoring position with nobody out in the ninth inning but could not bring that run home and ended up falling last night 6-4. to four. Kona Quiggle, what a big night for the Otters. He had a solo home run to start the Otters comeback in the seventh had a ground rule double in the ninth and became that tying run at second, but the Otters could not complete the comeback. They trailed four to nothing for much of the night. Otters looking to bounce back tonight and even up this series at a game apiece as they continue their push for the Frontier League playoffs. Under three weeks left to play in the Frontier League playoffs this season. Time to meet the starting lineups. First for the Evansville Otters, 42 and 36 on the season. The Otters have lost five of their last Six series played and five straight road series. Noah Myers leads off for Evansville and plays left field. Gary Mattis will bat second and play shortstop. Kona Quiggle will bat third and play center field. Jeffrey Baez in the cleanup role and playing right. Dakota Phillips bats fifth and plays first base. Yomar Reyes batting sixth and playing third. Bottom three in the honors lineup. Brian Rosario DHing, Jake Green the catcher, and Austin Bose the second baseman. It's the first ever pro start tonight for John Beamer, the righty on the mound, has made 33 appearances out of the bullpen this season for the Otters, but he will make his first start this season as an Otter. 2.83 ERA on the season for Beamer. He's a Kentucky native from the western Kentucky town of Hopkinsville. For the Florence Yalls, 34 and 45, but having a good August. They're eight and five this month. Brendan Price leads off and plays first base. Craig Massey will bat second and be the designated hitter making his series debut. Brian Fuentes bats third and plays third base. Hank Zeisler in the cleanup spot playing right field. Ray Zuber bats fifth and plays center field. Harrison DeNicola, the second baseman, will bat six. Bottom three in the Yalls lineup, Nick Wimmers, the catcher, Ed Johnson, the shortstop, and Lane Hoover, the left fielder. Ryan Watson, rookie pitcher, will start on the mound for Florence. He's two and two this season with a 3.30 ERA. Those are your starting lineups. We'll pause for the national anthem. First pitch on the other side, the Otters and Yoles from a Wednesday night on the banks of the Ohio River. Wednesday evening national anthem by the Voices of Indiana here in Florence, Kentucky. Almost set for baseball between the Yalls and the Otters. Ryan Watson on the bump tonight for the Yalls here in Florence, making his sixth start of the season. Two and two on the year. Off to a great start in his first year in pro ball. 3.30 ERA and 30 innings pitch. 18 strikeouts to just 10 walks. Three quality outings on the season, including his last two starts. A really impressive last start. Against the Gateway Grizzlies, one of the toughest ballparks in the league to pitch in in Sojay. He went seven strong innings, allowed just two runs on six hits, 
with six strikeouts. Talented righty played five years at Georgia State and was an all-second team Sun Belt player this past season with the Panthers in Atlanta. Around him on the diamond, Nick Wimmers making his series debut catching, stepping in for Zade Richardson, who caught yesterday. Brennan Price at first, Harrison DeNicola at second, Ed Johnson at short, and Brian Fuentes at third base. In the outfield, Lane Hoover and left, Ray Zuber in center, and Hank Zeisler in right field. Not too many changes on the infield for the Alls. DeNicola stepping in for Garcia at second, and the new catcher, Wimmers, behind the plate. It is muggy and overcast here in Florence. Temperatures at 77 degrees, but very humid at 60% humidity, making it feel in the low 80s. All overcast skies and a little bit of smog as well. Air quality index over 100, a little bit of smoke coming in from Canada, making it a rather gloomy and hot Wednesday evening. But unlike last night, which was quite rainy, especially through the early portion of the game and affected proceedings, not expecting any precipitation tonight. Noah Myers, the Edward Jones leadoff batter for the honors, walking to home plate. Warm-ups done for Ryan Watson on the mound. We're all set for baseball on a Wednesday evening here from Florence, Kentucky. All artificial turf surface here at Thomas More Stadium. It's 400 to straightaway center and 325 down both lines. Watson is ready, kicks and delivers. At first pitch, misses low to Myers and we're underway. Left fielder batting lefty moves back into the leadoff spot. Gary Mattis bumped back to the two hole for the Otters after starting at leadoff the first four games of his return to Evansville. The 1 0 misses low again. Two balls and no strikes to Myers. Big deep breath by the rookie pitcher. Works on the left side of the rubber. Kicks and delivers. The breaking ball sails high. 3 0 to Myers. It's strikeout for cancer night here at Thomas Moore Stadium. And the Yalls are in specialty purple tops today. Here's the 3-0 home. Taking all the way, ball four, just missed inside and a four pitch walk to Myers to start off the evening for Ryan Watson. All purple tops for the Yalls with Yalls written outlined in white. White numerals on the front and the back. All white pants with no, no piping. Black belts, red hat with a blue brim, a white front, and a red Y on the front. Red socks peeking out underneath the white pants for Watson. And white shoes topping off his uniform. Myers takes off on the first pitch. It's outside for a ball, and the throw is well late by Wimmers. And Myers ahead for a slide, safely into second with a stolen base. Wimmers did not get a good throw on that. Well to the right of the bag and short. An easy stolen base for Myers with the tag not even applied. It's Noah's 29th stolen base of the season. Takes a three stride lead at second. Here's the pitch home to Gary Mattis. It misses outside. Two balls and no strikes. So Myers a leadoff walk, still second. Nobody out here in the top of the first. And still looking for the first strike from Ryan Watson. Watson out of the windup. Fires home, and it's fouled straight back off the netting, two and one. Relatively small crowd here at the moment on this humid Wednesday evening. A little bit smaller, I'd say, than last night, but maybe just a late arriving crowd. Two one count to Mattis. Pitch home is fouled right side off the netting atop the Florence dugout, two and two. Mattis said his first multi-hit day as an honor this season, going two for four yesterday with a double and a stolen base. Two two home, outside and a full count to Mattis. Lights are on, but not really into effect on this gloomy evening here from Florence. Is trying to bounce back and even up this series at a game of peace after falling 6-4 to four last night. Pale foam. Grounded left side over to the shortstop. Johnson off his glove over his shoulder into center field. Myers will jog down to third base as Mattis is safely aboard at first. And E6 on Ed Johnson. Couldn't play a hard hit ball. And the honors have runners on the corners with nobody out. Brings up the red-hot lefty center fielder, Kona Quiggle. 
Kona led the Otters' comeback charge yesterday with two hits, including a home run and a double. First pitch from the ready pitcher home on the outside corner, a strike to Quiggle. Two for three yesterday for Kona, running an RBI. Had a solo home run in the seventh, and then a ground rule double in the ninth inning. As Mattis is caught in a rundown, throw back to first. Mattis now heading to second. Myers is going to come home, and the throw not in time as Mattis is tagged out. So Myers scores, and the Otters score first one to nothing while Mattis out on the bases. One out, one run across for the Otters, and the bases have been cleared. Odd play there. Mattis leading the wrong way at first base, and Watson hurled around and caught him in a rundown, but then Myers took off from third with the y'alls preoccupied and the throw came in too late. Quiggle grounds one up the middle, past the diving to Nicola, and into center field, a base hit for Quiggle. The first hit of the day for the Otters. Kona Quiggle stays hot, his third hit of the series already. Now a triple shy of the series cycle. So Quiggle aboard at first with one out. And a one nothing Otters lead here in the top of the first. Brings up the right fielder, Jeffrey Baez, for the Otters. Quiggle, a three-stride lead at first. Pitch home to Baez, a breaking ball on the outside corner for a strike. Watson working out of the stretch. Peeks over his shoulder at first to Quiggle. Held on the back by Price. And the pitch home. Chopped foul, 0-2. Baez had a two-run home run for the Otters yesterday in the eighth inning. Trimmed the lead down to two where the Otters had their chance in the ninth. They had two in scoring position with nobody out, but a ground out on the infield, a pop out on the infield, and then a loud fly out by Rosario ended the threat. Baez chops one left side, gloved by the third baseman Fuentes, tosses to second, and it's held there by DeNicola for the second out. Baez will trade places with Quiggle at first, and there's two outs in the inning. Five four fielder's choice, two outs in the inning. Baez at first, and it brings up the lefty first baseman, Dakota Phillips. One nothing Otters lead. Noah Myers led off with the walk, advanced to second on a stolen base, moved to third on an air, and scored as Mattis was caught in a rundown. Certainly a weird way to score, but the Otters will take it. First pitch miss low to Dakota Phillips, one and out. Watson nods, sits at the chest, and delivers. A change up right at the knees for a strike, one and one. Hard throwing Watson, fastball up to 94. Looking for his third straight quality outing. Pulling off an impressive win at Gateway last week. The 1-1 one -one sails high, two balls and one strike to Quiggle. Otters who didn't score a run until the seventh inning yesterday have a run across here in the first. Two one home. Misses low again. Three balls and one strike to deck. Good news for the Otters scoring first in their last five losses. Their opponent has scored first. Otters scoring first here tonight, hoping that leads to a victory. 3-1 is a hard hit ball up the middle, past the second baseman to Nicola, and into the right center gap. Baez hustling around to third. The ball is cut off at second base, and the Otters have runners at the corners again, now with two outs here in the first. Phillips lining one in on the hands, 100 miles per hour, up the middle, past the sprinting second baseman to Nicola. Two hits in the inning. Runners back on the corners with now two outs as it brings up Yomar Reyes, the third baseman. The Otters finished hot last night with their bats, and it's carrying over here in the first inning. First pitch home to Reyes is struck down the left field line, but hooking foul, bouncing off the edge of the construction wall down the left field line. Two hits, an air, and a walk here for the Otters in the first. 
One runner cross. Runners on the corners here with two outs. Another gloomy evening here in Florence. Still waiting to see the sun and have some baseball here in Kentucky, but maybe tomorrow is the third time's the try. A one. Inside on a fastball. One ball and one strike. Quiggle at third, Phillips at first, with two outs here on the top of the first, and the Otters leading one to nothing. It's the sixth batter of the inning here for the Otters. 1-1 one, one home, chopped foul, 1-2. and two. <laughs> Otters have a bullpen day for them this evening, with John Beamer making the start for the Otters on the other side. His first professional start. 1-2 count to Reyes, the pitch home swing and a miss. Slider falling out of the zone, strikes out Reyes and retires the side in the first. Otters get one run, two hits, and leaves two stranded. Middle of the first, one nothing Evansville on the Otters Digital Network. Welcome back to Thomas Moore Stadium. The Florence Yalls and the Evansville Otters in the middle game of this three-game series from Kentucky. The second of three series between these two in the month of August. And Evansville for the first time this season, a bullpen day with the ready John Beamer getting the start this evening. It's the first professional start for Beamer, but no one has pitched more this season for the Otters in a variety of spots. 33 appearances on the season for Beamer, including two saves. He's been a long reliever at times. Pitched as long as two and two thirds innings pitched this year. And he's been excellent all season. 2.83 ERA and 47 and two thirds innings pitched. Has allowed just 15 earned runs, 59 strikeouts to just 19 walks for Beamer. And he's been strong of late to start the month of August. Hasn't allowed a, a run in his last three outings over six and two thirds innings worked. Around the diamond, around Beamer, Jake Green, the catcher behind home plate. Dakota Phillips at first, Austin Post at second, Gary Mattis at short and Yomar Reyes at third base. Noah Myers in left, Kona Quiggle in center, and Jeffrey Baez in right field. Gary Mattis making his first start of the season at short. Austin Boast back in the starting lineup, first time this series at second base, with both Ethan Skinner and George Khalil, who started yesterday on the bench for the Ops. Hank Zeisler, the lefty, will lead things off for Florence and take a first pitch outside for a ball. The lineup I told you before for Florence, they have completely changed it in the 20 minutes before first pitch, so it was not accurate. Seisler takes a strike on the inside corner, one and one. We'll find out the Florence lineup together. Seisler leading off, and it appears Brennan Price will not play today here for the Yells. Originally scheduled to lead off as Seisler takes that side two and one. It's a big, Lost for the Yalls, losing their top hitter in Brandon Price. 2-1 home. Outside, three balls and one strength to Zeisler. First start for John Beamer in a little over a year. Working on the far right side of the rubber. Kicks and throws. Fastball sails high for ball four. A walk to Zeisler to start off the bottom half of the inning for Florence. The Otters lead one to nothing. Here in the bottom of the first. Jake Green catching Beamer in his first pro start. That pitcher catcher battery brought to you by the Answer Auto Repair East. Find all your battery needs at the Answer Auto Repair East. Located 2319 North Green River Road in Evansville. That brings up Craig Massey, the DH, batting lefty for Florence. Beamer nods and delivers. Fastball is high, 1-0 to Massey. Well, they call it a strike actually at the top of the zone, 0-1. Larry Hudson behind home today for three-man umpiring crew for the Frontier League. Ben Levin at third and Marvin King at first. A one home. 
A high chopper in front of home plate, gloved by Beamer off the mound, tosses the first to beat Massey down the line, and there's one out. High chopper right back to Beamer. And his first pro start having to do a little bit of defense. First down in the inning as Zeisler advances to second. That brings up Brian Fuentes, the ready third baseman. Beamer out of the stretch, peeking back at second at Zeisler, and now home. A slider misses inside, 1 0. Fastball slider sinker, three pitch mix for Beamer, back playing in his home state from Hopkinsville, Kentucky. It's much closer to Bossy Field than it is here to Florence. The far southwestern part of the state near the Tennessee border. 1 0. Fastball outside, two balls and no strikes. Beamer's last pro start to go back to June of 2022. It was his last ever appearance with Campbell in college. Here's the 2 0. High. Three balls and no strikes to Fuentes. He started in the Camels NCAA tournament regional game against Georgia Tech. Campbell would end up losing the game and having their season come to an end. That was Beamer's last. Collegiate game of his career. He started four games over his senior season at Campbell. 3-0 home. Right down the middle, 3-1 to Fuentes. Mostly been a reliever for most of his collegiate career, but had some starts at Wabash Valley College and had seven combined starts over two seasons with Campbell, primarily out of the pen. Might not be a more versatile arm, though, for the outers. 3-1. Sinker right at the knees for a strike. Pretty pitch from Beamer and a full count to Fuentes. Full count in this ready on ready matchup. Beamer kicks and delivers. It's fouled away right side and out of play. Beamer grabs the rosin bag behind the old turf mound, readjusts the cap, and steps back on the right side of the rubber. Beige brown glove today, sets at the belt, and delivers outside. Ball gets past the glove of green, bounces off the backstop, and down to third base goes Zeisler. Two walks in the inning by Beamer, and it's put runners on the corners with one out for Florence. Bring up Zade Richardson, the ready first baseman here today for Florence. First pitch home, swing and a miss. A wipe away slider. Richardson chasing one down to his knees. Zeisler at third, Fuentes at first with one out. Two walks by Beamer here in the first inning of Patuba Boy. A one home. Outside, one ball and one strike to Richardson. Otter scratching her across a run in the first. Noah Myers led off with a walk, stole second, advanced to third on an air, and scored when Gary Mattis was picked off first. The Otters had two more hits in the inning, but left two stranded. 1-1 one, one home. High chopper left side and bouncing foul over the third base coach's box. One, two count to Richardson. Beamer trying to get out of a little bit of trouble here in his first inning of work. It is a bullpen day, but Beamer's a guy that can go long as a starter. Goal is to have him go around 70, 75 pitches today, according to pitching coach Max Peterson. One, two home. Low, two balls and two strikes. Beamer finds success, maybe a push him a little bit further if he's you, know, you see the velocity start to dip around 50 or 60 pitches might bring him out a little bit sooner first time the Otters having a non-traditional starter on the bump all season here in game number 79 
2-2 home. Beautiful breaking ball right down the middle. Strike three called. A backdoor slider by Beamer. Nasty to freeze Richardson, and there's two away. 78 up on the inner third. First German-American bank strikeout of the day for Beamer. There's two away with runners still on the corners. And a lefty center fielder, Ray Zuber, the batter. Big day yesterday for Zuber. He went three for four, triple shy of the cycle. And his two-run homer in the seventh ended up being the game-winning runs and a 6-4 win for Florence. First pitch home, a slider misses low for a ball. 1-0 to Zuber. one nothing. the Otters lead here in the bottom of the first. Runners on the corners with two outs in the series middle game. Otters trying to avoid the same fate of their two series last week and drop the first two games of a series and have to avoid a sweep in the series finale. The 1-0 catches the outside corner for a strike. One and one to Zuber. A smaller crowd tonight than last night on a dreary Wednesday night from Florence. One one home. This is low. Backhanded stop by Green behind Dome Play. Two balls and one strike. Florence got out to a 4 0 lead last night. Otters never led. Getting off to a better start tonight with scratching across a run in the first. Beamer trying to get out of the jam here in the bottom half of the inning. Keep the lead intact. At the belt, the 2 1. Breaking ball outside. Three balls and one strike to Zuber. Just 19 walks and 47 innings pitch for Beamer entering today. But obviously a new mental situation for him to deal with starting for the first time this season. Told me he was excited about it, but definitely a change. 3-1 home. Line down the right field line and hooking foul right along the billboards down the right field line. Well, count to Zuber with two outs and two on. Runners will be going. Twentieth pitch of this inning here for Beamer. Sets and fires home. Breaking balls low for ball four. Zuber doesn't chase one outside of the zone. And three walks in the inning here by Beamer have loaded the bases. Loses Zuber, goes to first. Fuentes moves to second, and it brings up another lefty batter. Harrison DeNicola, the second baseman here for Florence. Zeisler at third, Fuentes at second, Zuber at first. First pitch from Beamer, inside, 1-0. DeNicola hitting 230 on the season with 38 batted in. He had a two run, two, R, two out RBI base hit for Florence last night. It's part of their three run third inning. 1 0 delivery. Chopped foul above the Florence dugout. 1 and 1. Love on the hip, sets at the belt. Beamer readies and fires. Low in the dirt, two balls and one strike to DeNicola. Already more walks here for Beamer in this first inning than in any outing all season. As I had been just two walks in any outing, but he's walked the bases full here in the first with two outs. 2-1 count to DeNicola on the pitch home. Is swung on and lined into center field down for a base set. One run will score. Fuentes around third. The Otters will throw down to third base. Ball is dropped by Reyes. Everyone safe and it's 2-0 Florence. DeNicola delivers for the second straight night. A two RBI, two out base hit for Florence to take a 2-1 lead. Zeisler scoring from third. Fuentes going easily from second. With two outs, and Zuber goes first to third. Reyes couldn't hold on to the ball on the throw in from Quiggle. 
So Zuber at a third, to Nikolai at first. That brings up the lefty catcher, Nick Wimmers. Switch hitter batting lefty, first pitch misses outside. Have seven of the nine batters in this Florence lineup, primarily batting lefty with Wimmers, the switch hitter. About as heavy a lefty lineup as possible here for Chad Rhodes' squad tonight. 1-0. Breaking ball inside. They called a strike, 1-1. One one. Two RBI base hit for DeNicola. First hit of the inning. Beamer walked the bases full. Lawrence quickly retaking the lead. The 1-1. One one. Swing and a miss on a sinker falling out of the zone. 1-2. Zuber at third, DeNicola at first with two outs and a one-two count to Wimmers. Two to one, Florence lead. One-two home. Lined right side, pass posted into right field. Zuber will walk home and score. It's three to one, Florence. Way out of the zone, Wimmers golfs one into right field to score the third run of the inning for Florence. Back-to-back -back hits now for the Owls for DeNicola and Wimmers. And the Otters pitching coach, Max Peterson, walking out to chat with Beamer. Not the start the right he was hoping for in his first pro start of the year. The command is often what leads to success or a lack of success. And when you walk three batters, start forcing it a little bit too much. And Stop executing your pitches, stop missing your spots, putting too much over the zone, and a rocky start for Beamer with the three walks, and now back-to-back -back hits for Florence have played at three. So a 3-1 lead for the Alls, and it brings up the shortstop, Ed Johnson. DeNicola at second, Wimmers at first, and the eighth batter of the inning for Florence. Beamer home. First pitch strung on by Johnson, grounded right to Mattis. It's shorty underhand, tosses to Bost, who steps on the second base bag for the force out to retire the side. Florence answers in the bottom of the first. Three runs on three walks, two hits, and they leave two stranded. After an inning paid, it's Florence three, Evansville one on the Evansville Otters digital network.
Welcome back to Thomas Moore Stadium. Top of the second inning, 3-1 lead for Florence over Evansville. We're having, yes, more, more fun here in the Florence press box for another day. There was no pigeon this time, just my soundboard not being happy. There's one out in the inning as Jake Green swings and misses at the 0-1 pitch from Ryan Watson. Brian Rosario started the inning with a soft grounder right back to the pitcher Watson who threw to first for an easy out on just two pitches. 0-2 home to Green, misses outside. One ball and two strikes. 3-1 lead for Florence here in the top of the second. The all scoring three runs, all with two outs in the first. 1-2 home to Green, misses low. Two balls and two strikes. Otters got one across in the first, but they left two stranded. Florence making sure to get some runs across. 2-2, two -two. inside, nearly hit green in a full count. It's continued to be a storyline for the Otters. They have not executed well with two outs and runners on to convert their chances for much of the last few weeks. It's apparently played a factor in the Otters' struggles. Evansville only had five stranded last night, but already in the first inning, felt like he had a pitcher, Ryan Watson, on the ropes early and couldn't to put together a big inning. Florence does just that in the bottom half. The payoff foam misses low for ball four. And green as he always does as a run down to first base as he works a full count walk. One out. Green at first and Austin Bose comes to the plate here for Evansville. Number nine batter for the Otters making his series debut. Boast, 10th game of the season. First pitch home. This is, nope, catches the inside corner 0 and 1. Boast, signed from Texas A&M. Just graduated from Aggie Land in June. Now his 10th game as a pro. Played just one game last series against Washington on Saturday. Went 0 for 3. The 0 1. At the knees for a strike 0 and 2. Green at first with one out here in the top of the second. 3-1 lead for Florence over Evansville. Watson out of the stretch on the far left side of the rubber delivers. Low, one and two. Otters making some changes in the lineup today with Green Boast. Both in the lineup for the Otters. One, two, grounded foul. Bose stays alive. Otters moving Gary Mattis onto the infield. Brian Rosario staying as the designated hitter. The Otters moving Quiggle out to center with Phillips over at first. Khalil and Skinder both out of the lineup for the Otters. Andy McCauley and Evans will still try to find the right recipe. Try to peak at the very end of the season. That's always the goal. The one-two is lined down the left field line, caught by the third baseman, Fuentes. And Green slides back into first before a throw comes in. Pretty play by Fuentes, hard hit ball by Bose, who has a frustrated gait as he walks back to the dugout. Hit a ball on a rope right down the line, but Fuentes with an athletic play for the second out of the inning. Two outs, Green still at first, back to the top of the lineup, and Noah Myers, who walked his first time up, but came around to score the first run of the game for Evansville. Watson home, outside 1-0 to Myers. 3-1, the Alls lead the Otters here in the top of the second inning. The Otters will have to fight from an early deficit for a second straight night. 1-0 is fouled away, 1-1. One one. One, one home. Is sent high in the air to right field. Back is Zeisler. See you later. Noah Meyer, two run home run off the second row of billboards out in right field, ties the game at three. A breaking ball at the knees. Myers hammers 410 feet over the right field wall. Four 
fifth home run of the season for Myers. Just like that, the Otters tie it up. They needed a spark and they get it from their leadoff guy. First pitch to Mattis is chop left side and foul. Already the third home run here for the Otters here in Florence. Quiggle and Baez had home runs yesterday and two runs shot by Myers getting the Otters back going here in the second inning. Pitch in for a strike to Mattis, 0-2. O2 home. Outside, one ball and two strikes. Noah Myers is 14th home run of the season. Started the season slow on the road, but now half of his homers come on the road. He's become an all-around great player. The one-two misses low. Two balls and two strikes. The Otters had a quiet weekend power-wise. Didn't hit a home run out at Bossy Field in the three-game series against Washington. But the power has woken back up here at Thomas Moore Stadium for Evansville. 2-2 two -two home, swing and a miss. Mattis down on strikes. That retires the side in the second inning. A two-run home run by Noah Myers. Ties the game at three, middle of the second. 3-3 three -three the score on the Evansville Otters Digital Network. Bottom of the second inning here from Florence. It's a three to three ball game. A lot of offense early between the Yells and the Otters. Lane Hoover leads off for Florence. It takes a first pitch strike at the knees. Noah Myers, a two run home run, giving Evansville a much needed spark and tying the game at three. Pitch home to Hoover, sails high. One ball and one strike. Three runs in the first for Florence on three walks, two hits. All runs scoring with two outs. 1-1 one, one home, high, two balls and one strike. Mentioned it yesterday, home runs win you ball games. And for an Otters offense that's been inconsistent at times this year, power is a big way to build some confidence in your bats and build some reliability as well. 2-1, chop left side, right to the third baseman, Reyes. Throw to first is in time to beat Hoover by a stride, and there's one out in the second. Want to make your lawn and landscape look like a field of dreams? Make sure you use 10 Bars Professional Brand Products. Pick them up at any of our three locations, beautifying the communities we live in and the grass we walk and play on all since 1940. One out, nobody on. Back to the top of the lineup for Florence and Hank Zeisler. All tied at three in the bottom of the second. Beamer home. Pitch misses outside one and out. Beamer in his second inning of work trying to find better command. He walked the bases loaded in the first inning before back-to-back -back hits scoring three runs. 1-0, sails high, two balls and no strikes. Already 40 pitches here for Beamer and his first professional start. It's only worked out of the bullpen so far this season for the Otters. 
Rocks back and forth in the 2-0. On the outside corner is strike. Two balls and one strike. Saw the Otters pitching coach Max Peterson after the last inning for Beamer. Just have a chat with Larry Hudson. I think he wanted to know where the pitches were missing. 2-1. Oh, that's a beautiful slider catching the outside corner. Two balls and two strikes. Beautiful backdoor slider into Zeisler. Beamer is not a guy that typically struggles with his command, but maybe some jitters in his first professional start. 2-2 two -two home, outside the full counts. Dark clouds overhead, but no rain expected. Just a dreary, overcast evening here from Northern Kentucky. Still waiting for the first sunny ball game on this road trip for the Otters. Washington looks to be beautiful this weekend in Pennsylvania. Payoff home, misses outside, and a full count walk to Zeisler with one out. A fourth walk for Beamer now. One on, one out, and brings up the designated hitter, lefty Craig Massey. Beamer working back out of the stretch, peeks over his shoulder, nods, and delivers. Low, 1-0 and to Massey. It's the first time Massey is facing the Otters here in the month of August. He's been dealing with some injuries, only played four games in the month. Missed the whole Otters series at Bossy Field to start the month and was absent from the lineup yesterday, but slotting in as the designated hitter here today for the Owls, and certainly a talented bat. The 1-0 inside, and it hit Massey. Massey's not happy, he slams the bat down, puts his hands on his knees as he slowly limps down the first base line. I think it might have hit off one of his knees. And for a guy that's already banged up, being hit by a pitch is not a desirable outcome. The Owls athletic trainer, Tanner Harned, walking out to check on Massey. And it looks like he's going to come out of the ball game. Well, that's not what Florence wanted to see. One of their best hitters, hitting 359 on the year. That's fourth best in the Frontier League. When he's been healthy, he's been excellent. Veteran y'all, but... Got hit and back to the dugout and his day is done just like that. Tristan Garcia or Jeremiah Burks make it coming in for Florence to pinch run over at first base. Now it is Garcia, I was right. You gotta trust your gut sometimes. So Massey hit by a pitch. Tristan Garcia will take his spot at first. It's a designated hitter spot, so the alls have some more flexibility, but the big blow having one of their best bats now out of the lineup the rest of the day. For his first game back in a week. Brian Fuentes now the batter, takes the first pitch outside for a ball. Zeisler at second, and Garcia at first. A walk and a hit by pitch here in the second inning for Beamer, and he's in another jam. 1-0, slider swung on and missed, 1-1. One Otters would love to get as much length as possible out of Beamer. On a six game road trip, always wears on the pitching staff a little bit more. Never easy to have a bullpen day, especially early in a road trip. 1-1 one, one is fouled straight back and off the netting into the Yalls dugout one and two. Justin Watlin will go tomorrow for the Otters. Parker Brahms is off the IL and the Otters hoping to be able to use them this weekend in Washington. Injuries in a variety of circumstances for the Otters pitching corps. It's left them a little bit shorthanded here with three weeks left in the season. One, two home. Breaking ball is spoiled off the screen and Fuente stays alive. All tied at three in the bottom of the second and Florence trying to keep this offensive barn burner going. There's been runs scored in the first three half innings of baseball. One, two home. Slider just missed outside. Beamer hopping up and down. He liked that pitch, two and two.
Three runs on three hits, no errors for the Otters. Three runs on two hits, one error for the Yalls. They've walked four times and now have already five free passes with the four walks and one hit by batter. 2-2, two -two, swung on and missed. Big fastball on the outside of the zone. Strikes out Fuentes for the second. German American Bank strike out of the evening for John Beamer. Two outs, two on, and brings up the first baseman, Zade Richardson. Richardson, now the guy that's leading this team in batting average of players that are in the lineup at this point. First pitch home. This is low. No, call it a strike at the knees. 0-1. Hitting 3-0-7 on the year. Richardson with Massey out of the lineup. Being hit and going back to the dugout. And a late scratch for Brennan Price. Those are the two top hitters for Florence. Richardson, the only guy hitting over 300 in the lineup for the Yalls. Playing first base today after catching yesterday. 0-1 is chopped left side and foul. 0-2. Beamer a strike away from escaping the second with a scoreless inning. Noah Myers had to run way over to get that foul ball and throws it into the Otters' bullpen. That's behind the left field wall. O2 count to Richardson. Beamer out of the stretch, peeks back at second, working on the right side of the rubber. At the belt and delivers. Swing and a miss. Big slider blown by Richardson. And Beamer escapes the jam in the second inning for a scoreless inning. We're tied at three after two innings played on the Otters Digital Network. Two innings complete from Florence. We're tied at, at three between the Yalls and the Otters. Kona Quiggle leads off in the third for the Otters and takes a first pitch low from a ball for from Ryan Watson. One in the first, two in the second for the Otters on a two-run Noah Myers blast. Quiggle fouls one off the screen, one and one. Three runs on three hits, no errors for the Otters. Three runs on two hits, one error for the Yalls. Early offense by Evansville off the rookie pitcher Watson. The 1-1 one -one misses low for a ball. Two balls and one strike. Two one. Chopped right side. Playing it back on a hop. The first baseman Richardson underhand tosses to Watson. The pitcher steps on the back for the first down of the inning.
One out in the third with nobody on. Brings up the righty right fielder Jeffrey Baez and gives us time to check the Frontier League standings brought to you by Seal Corp. Watson delivers. Baez fouls it away. Into the seats. Gateway, Schaumburg, and Evansville. Three teams in playoff position. The Frontier League West all lost last night. And Washington happy. The Wild Things, five and a half back of the Otters for the last playoff spot in the Frontier League West. Evansville, six games back of first. And Schaumburg, three games back of first place Gateway. Baez swings and misses 0-2. Florence, 14 and a half back of first. And now nine and a half back of the Otters for making eight and a half back of the Otters for the final playoff spot. 0-2. Misses inside. Check swing by Baez. Appeal to first. He held up one and two. Quebec is hot again in the East. They've won four in a row. Got their 50th win last night. First team to 50 wins in the Frontier League. They're 50 and 28 now. One two pitch. Outside. Two balls and two strikes. Quebec. Four in a row, winners of eight of their last ten. They're now a game and a half up on New Jersey and two and a half up on Tri-City. Still the three teams in the playoffs in the East. The 2-2 is swung on and lined into center field. It will hop into shallow center for a base hit for Baez. Jeffrey Baez with his second hit of the series and his first today, a one-out knock up the middle. Puts one on with one out and brings up Dakota Phillips. The yeah, they're certainly seeing the ball well out of the hand of the rookie pitcher, Ryan Watson. There's shut out by another rookie pitcher, Carter Spivey, last night in his sixth inning start. But others faring well against Watson early. Baez takes off, great jump. Wimmers rushed the catch, and it rolled behind his glove and back to the backstop. Jeffrey Baez almost scaring Wimmers with how quickly he got an incredible jump. And even if Wimmers collected and threw, I think Baez would easily be safe into second. He's got a stolen base, second for the Otters. And the Otters have another runner in scoring position with one out, trying to retake the lead here in the third as we're tied at three. Busy offensive filled game to start the night. 1-0, fouled off the screen, 1-1. One one. Watson out of the stretch, peeks back at second and fires. Swing and a miss. Big fastball by Phillips. At 92 on the outer third. One two count to Phillips. Watson home. It misses low, two and two. The outers. Five and a half up on Washington for that last playoff spot. And the Otters playing the Wild Things this weekend in Western Pennsylvania. 2-2 two -two coming home to Phillips. The pitch low and a full count to Dak. Baez at second and one out in the third. We're tied at three. Otters definitely with like at least one win here in Florence to themselves a little more breathing room from Washington and regardless of what happens in Washington this weekend make sure they have a couple games still up in the wild card Baez takes off as Phillips hammers one high in the air to right center back Zeisler that falls out of here Dakota Phillips a two-run home run and the Otters take a five to three lead Second home run of the day for the Otters, the fourth in the series, the fourth in the last five innings of baseball here at Thomas Moore Stadium, and the Otters pounding Ryan Watson early. 411 feet by Dakota Phillips. That one cleared the second row of billboards out in right field, a little bit farther than Noah Myers to right field. Xiomar Reyes swings and misses at the first pitch he sees. Phillips eighth home run of the season and the Otters with quite a power surge here at Thomas Moore Stadium for their five home runs accounted by homers. 0-1, oh, 
Breaking ball on the outside corner, 0-2 to Reyes. Took a pitch at the knees. Boy, did Phillips do some damage to the baseball. 0-2. Hacked right side, right at the second baseman. DeNicola collects and tosses to first, two away. So the Otters really would love to get a, at least a win here in Florence. I'd love even the series victory to snap that five-game road series losing streak. And they're off to a terrific offensive start on this Wednesday evening. One in the first, two in the second, two now in the third. Two-run home run last inning by Myers. Now a two-run home run by Phillips here in the third. Two hats, nobody on for Rosario. Lefty batter takes the first pitch strike. On a bullpen day, too. Certainly want a little bit more run support. The Otters getting it early. The 0-1 misses outside. One ball and one strike. Otters hit two home runs yesterday in the seventh and the eighth inning. So it's the last six innings for the Otters played here in Florence. They have four home runs. Watson misses outside. Two balls and one strike. Watson sidesteps and the pitch home outside. Three and one to Rosario. 5-3, Otters lead here in the top of the third. Otters didn't score for the first six innings last night. Exploded early here in Florence. 3-1 home is flied left side and out of play. Ryan Watson had been so solid for the Alls. Two quality outings his last two starts, including against Gateway. The Otters beating him up early tonight. Payoff pitch home from to Rosie, chopped right side, playing it back on off the first base, and Richardson gloves it. He'll toss to Watson, who just beats Rosario to the bat. A two-run home run, 411 feet off the bat of Dakota Phillips, gives the Otters a 5-3 lead, middle of the third on the Otters Digital Network. Bottom of the third inning from Thomas Moore Stadium. The Otters have scored five runs in the first three innings and lead the Alls five to three on this Wednesday night from Florence. Ray Zuber leads off for the Alls in the bottom of the third. Took a first pitch outside from John Beamer. 1-0 home from the righty Kentucky native on the outside corner is strike one and one. Noah Myers, a two-run home run to right in the second, tying the game. And Dakota Phillips giving the Otters a lead with a 411-foot blast, clearing both walls in right field. 1-1 one, one on the outside corner, 1-2. and two. There's a street out past right where a few cars will occasionally drive by, and if there was a car driving by when Phillips hit it, he might have killed a windshield. 
huge blast by Dak, who had a huge home run back in June here at Thomas Moore Stadium, one that cleared this jumbotron out in right field. This one nearly as far as Beamer will step off on the bump. One-two count to Zuber with nobody on in the bottom of the third inning. And now Larry Hudson's going to call time and he's out to talk with Beamer. So 2-2 two, two count to Zuber. I don't know. Beamer wanted some clarification or Larry Hudson had something for Beamer or did step off at the last minute. Andy McCauley now from the Otters dugout is asking what's going on. And the explanation from Larry Hudson suffices and we're back to work here. 2-2 two, two count to Zuber. Nobody on in the bottom of the third. Otters lead 5-3. Pitch home. Chopped right side. Back in by the first baseman Phillips. He'll race to the first base bag himself. And beat Zuber there, one out in the bottom of the third. One out, nobody on for the second baseman, Harrison DeNicola. 5-3 lead for the Otters over the Alls here in the bottom of the third inning on a dreary overcast Wednesday evening from Florence, Kentucky, just south of Cincinnati. First pitch home and for a strike to DeNicola. Nicola had the big two RBI, two out base hit for the Alls in the first. Florence scored three in the first. A one outside, one ball and one strike. Florence has just two hits, but the command by Beamer got off to a slow start. He walked three batters in the first before he ever gave up a hit. Walked and hit one in the second, but got out of that jam and getting some great run support. One, one misses outside. Two balls and one strike to Nicola. New position for Beamer making his first start of the season. 60 pitches now here for John, the 2-1. Outside, three balls and one strike. Otters said around 70, 75 pitches would probably be the end of the day for Beamer. Trying to at least complete the three innings here in his first pro start. The 3-1 is hooked well foul. Look out, kids. Right off the top of the... Backstop down the right field line and almost skipped into the grassy berm where there was about 30 kids standing there. Just clipped the top of the wall and deflected back into right field where Jeffrey Baez walking over, tosses it into now jubilant kids and a little more safe. And a dangerous hard hit foul ball. Full count to Nicola, the pitch home. Beautiful breaking ball on the outside corner, strike three called. Backdoor slider from Beamer. There's two away in his fourth German American Bank strikeout of the evening. That slider by John Beamer, especially facing these lefty pitchers, really effective. He can locate it as he has these last two innings. Lawrence having trouble. Nick Wimmer's up with two outs and nobody on. Takes a first pitch high for a ball, one and out. Beamer's first year with the Otters, second year pro. Played at a few outings last year with the Brewers Arizona Complex League team. The 1 0 catches the inside corner for a strike one and one. Four innings pitched with the Brewers Arizona Complex League team last summer after graduating from Campbell. And now here in the Frontier League. 1 1, swing and a miss on a big fastball at 90 miles per hour, 1 and 2. Wimmers will call time and reset the batting gloves. Beamer is certainly going to stay in the game if he keeps on pitching like this. Starting to find a groove here in the third inning for a quick one, two, three, third. Sets out of the windup, delivers, and it's fouled away left side. And look out on the suite level off the roof of the bathroom, one and two. Beamer has retired his last four batters faced. The Otters have given him plenty of run support. 5-3 lead for Evansville. The 1-2 slider outside. Two balls and two strikes. Already passed the season high of pitches for Beamer, which was 52.
2-2 home. A check swing foul off the inside of the bat and into the sinks. Otters needed just two relievers out of the pen last night. As here comes the 2-2 outside and a full count. So a well-rested bullpen into today. And Leone de la Cruz only had nine pitches in his outing out of the pen. Likely Hunter Clucky, the only arm not available today for the Otters out of their bullpen. The payoff pitch home is popped up, fouled down the left field line and out of the reach of any blue jerseys, bouncing up against the warning track. Do the payoff pitch again to Wimmers. Time is called. Andy Hudson will reset the pitch clock and now get behind on play. There's a ball out and left. Here comes another payoff. It's lined down the third base line off the glove of Reyes and bouncing into foul territory. Wimmer hustling to second. He'll have a stand up double. A liner down the third base line. Reyes leaped up and it bounced right off the top of his glove. And then into foul territory. Just enough on it for Wimmers. And he's aboard at second with two outs. One, if you get maybe another half an inch by Reyes, you're able to reel it in. So a double for Wimmers, and the Yalls have a runner at second with two outs. And Johnson, the ready shortstop, digs in. Rare righty here for Beamer to face. One of just two in the lineup. Chris Bitchholm, a front door slider on the inside corner for a strike. 75 pitches now for Beamer here in just the third inning. Certainly... The Otters were hoping for a little bit more of an efficient out. But Beamer has certainly grown more confident in his last couple innings worked. Oh, one one home. Fastball outside. One ball and one strike. Already threw an hour of baseball and still in just the bottom of the third. 5-3 lead for the Otters over the Yalls. A 1-1 one, one home. Line into left center field, down for a base hit. Wimmer sent from third, picked up by Kona Quiggle, who will toss the second, and Wimmer scores standing up. Ed Johnson lining one to the left center gap. And the Yalls with back-to-back -back hits with two outs in the third, get back on the board and trim the lead down to one. It's five to four. With the number nine batter, Lane Hoover, coming to the plate. And certainly has the feel tonight of a lot of the games these two teams played back in June here at Thomas Morris Stadium. Super high offensive games. Hoover swings the first pitch, grounds it right to Maddish. It's short, collects, tosses to Boast, who steps on the second base back for the force out and retires the side. Ed Johnson, a two-out RBI base hit, gets the Yalls a run back, but the Otters still in front, 5-4 to four after three innings played on the Evansville Otters Digital Network.
Jake Green leads off for the honors in the top of the fourth inning. Already nine runs combined for the first three innings played for the two sides. And the honors lead the Alls five to four. Ryan Watson out for his fourth inning of work, delivers home to Jake Green outside for a ball. The Otters have hit up Watson for four earned runs in three innings pitch. Two strikeouts, two walks for Watson. Pitch home misses low. Two balls and no strikes to the ready Jake Green. One in the first for Evansville, a two-run home run by Noah Myers in the second, a two-run home run by Dakota Phillips in the third. 2-0. Just missed outside. Three balls and no strikes to Green, who walked in his first at bat. Back in the second inning, he came around to score on the Myers Blast. The 3-0 on the outside corner, 3-1. and one. The 71 pitches for Watson in just the fourth inning for a Yalls bullpen that has struggled this year. The 3-1, swing and a miss. The slider in on the hands and a full count to Green. Green will call time. I was That was a little out of the pre-pitch clock era. Green stepped off and reset the batting gloves, and Larry Hudson was just looking at him, waiting for him to call time as the pitch clock was running. And then he eventually called time. The payoff foam, a high chopper left side, a really high hop, fielded by Johnson. Throw to first is in time. Picked off the dirt by Zade Richardson at first, one away. That ball took a massive hop off the turf right in front of home plate and made it all the way to short at Johnson. Ended up being a close play down the line. One out in the fourth, and it brings up the second baseman, Austin Boast. Otters have scored at least a run in the first three innings of today's game. First pitch to the righty, Boast, a strike on a slider. Otters trying to find some success on the road. They've lost 12 of their last 16 road games and five straight road series. A one, Bo slides one right at the third baseman, Fuente, so he reaches up the glove and makes the catch for the second out of the inning. That's the second time Bo has done that. Two liners hit well, but right at Fuente at third. That play a little bit easier for Fuente. So the first one off the bat of Bo's back in the second. So there's two outs, bases empty, and back to the top of the order, and Noah Myers is yet to get out today. Pitch home from Watson. Myers takes low, 1-0. A walk by Noah in the first, stole second, came around to score, and then a two-run home run in the second inning. 1-0. Outside, two balls and no strikes. Now 68 runs on the season for Myers. They're entered today, tied for fifth most runs in the Frontier League. 2-0 is low. Three balls and no strikes to Myers. Worked his 49th walk of the season. 14th home run. Leads the Otters with an on-base percentage of 420. 3-0 on the outside corner. 3-1. and one. Myers was also teammates with the starting pitcher tonight for the Otters. John Beamer at Wabash Valley Community College. Our teammates on one of the best community college baseball teams ever. The 3-1 fouled left side and out of play. In 2019, Myers was one of the top bats on the team. Beamer, one of the top arms. The Warriors of Wabash Valley Community College in Mount Carmel, Illinois, won 49 straight games. They finished 55-4. and four. Payoff foam, low for ball four. The former Wabash Valley Warrior works a walk. Two walks now on the day for Myers, and he still hasn't gotten out. 55 and 4. The crazy thing is, Wabash Valley would not even make the JUCO World Series. They lost, especially in the version of the Super Regionals in JUCO baseball. Had a 49 game win streak that lasted from the second weekend of the season all the way to the start of the playoffs. Meaning on the mound is Carl Craigie, the pitching coach for Florence, out to chat with Ryan Watson. Myers at first, Gary Mattis coming up with two outs here in the fourth and the Otters leading five to four. Now 
Hannes is 0 for 2 today. Did reach back in the first on an error by the shortstop, Johnson. Need to complete Craigie back to the Yalls dugout. It's been a long season for him and the Yalls pitching staff, though. They've been much better in the month of August. Myers a three stride late at first. Already stole second base back in the first inning. Pitch home. Mattis shows bunt, pulls it back, but it's a strike anyways on the outside corner. Otters with two stolen bags already on the young rookie catcher, Nick Wimmers. Tate Richardson has started the first four games between these teams this month. First time the Otters testing the arm of Wimmers. Watson steps off. Head first slide back in by Myers on the pickoff throw. He's in safely. Myers at first, two outs in the fourth. The Otters lead five to four. Oh, one count to Mattis. Another step off and a pickoff throw back to first. And Myers again back in the bag. So both disengagements now used by Watson. And Myers can take a really big lead at first. Just have to make sure not to leave too early because then Watson can turn around and get him. Myers does take off, but Mattis pops it up high in the air in foul territory. Three people jerseys conversion. It's the catcher Wimmers who makes the basket catch along the brown turf. Retires the side in the fourth inning. The first scoreless inning worked by Watson. Middle of the fourth, it's Evansville five, Florence four on the Evansville Otters digital network. Bottom of the fourth inning here from Florence. The Otters making a call to the bullpen on a bullpen day for Evansville. The Otters leading 5-4. to four. The righty James Crick in for the Otters making his 26th appearance of the season. 4.91 ERA on the year for Crick in 36 and two-thirds innings worked. He's functioned as the Otters' long reliever all year and on a bullpen day will likely be asked to work at least two innings here starting the fourth. Righty delivers home. A first pitch low to the lefty Hank Zeisler in the top of the order for Florence. This call to the bullpen brought to you by the Answer Auto Repair East. Visit the Answer Auto Repair East at 2319 North Green River Road or call at 812-475-9000 for all your battery needs. The 1-0, a breaking ball misses outside. Two balls and no strikes. Love on the hip of Crick. Works out of the stretch even though nobody on. Sets at the chest and delivers a fastball right down the middle, two and one. Fastball slider change up, three pitch mix for Crick. First year professional. Graduated from Hillsdale College, D2 school last year. The two one, misses low. Three balls and one strike to Zeisler. Has been asked They've been put into a lot of unenviable positions for the Otters this year in long relief situations when starters falter. Lightly expecting to be used tonight with the Otters going with a bullpen day. 3-1-0. At the knees, it'll full count to Zeisler. John Beamer looked a lot better for the Otters over his last two innings work, but a really long first inning with three walks and three runs across cost him going any deeper into this ballgame. He finishes with 79 pitches thrown. Payoff pitch home. 
popped up high in the air into right center field. Back is Kona Quiggle, a few steps from the track, reaches up and makes the jumping catch as he lands right in front of the wall, one away. Pretty play by Kona Quiggle in right center field. A little hop and a skip and a butte by Kona Quiggle on the edge of the warning track in right center field. So Zeisler flies out and the first batter Crick faces. Now it'll be Tristan Garcia in his first at bat of the day. He takes a first pitch strike on the outside corner. Garcia came in the pinch run for Craig Massey who exited after he was hit by a pitch back in the second inning. Oh, one to the lefty inside. One ball and one strike to Garcia. One, one home. Is popped up into left field, taking Myers back at the warning track, reaches up and makes the catch as he softly steps into the wall. Right in front of the Otters' bullpen, two tough catches by the Otters' outfield. Myers making a running grab on a quickly flying out line drive right up against the wall. Two outs, nobody on for the third baseman, Brian Fuentes. Certainly keeping the ball down is a focus for Crick. He's given up four home runs on the season, including back-to-back -back outings, allowing a homer. First pitch to the ready, Brian Fuentes misses outside. Working on the far right side of the rubber, tall blue stockings for Crick. He delivers home, a swing and a miss. On a fast ball at 90 miles per hour, one and one. Otter's outfield shaded a few steps to the left for the righty Fuentes. The 1-1, one, one, a breaking ball on the outside corner, 1-2. and 5-4 lead for the Otters here in the bottom of the fourth inning. A two-run home run by Noah Myers and another two-run blast by Dakota Phillips, giving the Otters a lead. Evansville took an early 1-0 lead, but Florence responded with three in the bottom of the first. Craig shapes off the shine from Jake Green, likes what he has now. And awaiting the one, two. The wind home. Chopped off the end of the bat foul. Five runs on five hits, no airs for Evansville. Four runs on four hits, one air for Florence. Otters finding success by way of the long ball for a second straight night. One, two home. Lined high in the air into left center field, taking Quiggle back. This ball is out of here. Brian Fuente smashing one over the left center wall and tying the game at five. A breaking ball right in the heart of the plate. And Florence has scored a run of peace in back-to-back -back headings to tie the game at five. Y'all's first homer of the day. It's Fuentes' seventh of the season after two hard hit balls to the outfield. Florence finally makes the Otters and Crick play with the Fuentes solo blast. So the Y'all's have cut the, have tied the game back up. And back and forth we go tonight. St. Richardson takes the first pitch struck. One count to the righty. Swing and a miss, so and two. We talked about it last night. The ball will really carry out of the yard here at Thomas Morris Stadium, even though at first look, it's not a small stadium, but with the interstate behind us, just the way the airflow and current is, unless the wind is actively blowing in, the ball will carry out, and it is a perfectly still night tonight. The American flag in right field is flat along the flagpole. 0-2, outside, one ball and two strikes. Some humidity as well tonight is only going to help the ball carry even a little bit more. Had two home runs, or three combined home runs yesterday, and already three today, and we're still in just the fourth inning. One-two home. 
Sails high, two balls and two strikes. Y'all's loving their two out hitting today. All five runs for Florence have come with two outs. It's been a frequent problem for Otters pitching. Trying to get that last strike of an inning to get out of it. 2-2, two -two, fouled right side and hooking out of play. Right onto the trampoline with kids on. They're just hopping up and down. They find a baseball at their feet, pick it back up, and go back up, humping on the trampoline in the big kid zone down the right field line here in Florence. 2-2, two -two. inside. It nearly hit Richardson in a full count. They've got a mini basketball court down the right field line. I was putting up a few shots before the game. Had a little workout in. I won't tell you how many shots I made, but had a lot of fun anyways. Payoff pitch home. Chopped hard left side, back in it by Reyes, off his glove, skips over his shoulder into foul territory, picks it back up, and Richardson safe at first. Hard hit ball down the line by Richardson, and Reyes couldn't really get the body in front of it, tried to back pick it with the glove, and it skipped off his glove into his left. Go down is a base hit for Richardson. His first of the day. And there's one on with two outs for Ray Zuber, the lefty center fielder. Well, for one today with a walk. Three strand lead at first for Richardson. Phillips holding him on the bag. And the outer's infield shifted in. First pitch in for a strike to Zuber. Five runs apiece. And we're still in just the bottom of the fourth. Otters trying to even up this series at a game apiece. 0-1 is fouled off the screen, 0-2. 6-4 win for Florence yesterday. More low scoring game, similar to all three games at Bossy Field two weeks ago. But this feeling just like all three games here at Thomas More Stadium in late June, which all involved high scoring games. Lots of homers and runs. 0-2 in the dirt, 1-2. Otters scored 31 runs against the Alls in the series back here in June. Their most runs scored in a series all year. Otters scored at least eight runs in every game. There was at least 12 runs scored in all three of those games between the Otters and the Alls. In the first series of the year here at Thomas More Stadium. 1-2 home. Inside, two balls and two strikes to Zuber. Lights are on and just starting to come into effect. Dark overcast sky starting to darken above. All tied at five here in the fourth. The 2-2 home, high and a full count. Payoff pitch coming to Zuber with one on and two outs here in the bottom of the fourth. Crick at the chest, working on the right side of the rubber, kicks and throws. Hammered high in the air to right field. Back is Baez at the warning track. See you later. Ray Zuber, a two-run home run, a massive shot up in the air. It was a matter of it carried over the wall, and it did by a couple of feet into the Florence bullpen. And the Yalls have taken the lead with four runs here in the fourth inning. Seven to five, Yalls lead. Zuber, a two run home run last night in the seventh that ended up being the game winning runs. A go ahead two run home run here in the fourth inning on a high homer carrying over the right field wall. His 11th home run of the season. The Owensboro native really hurting his hometown honors this weekend. Harrison DeNicola takes the first pitch outside for a ball. The 1-0 misses again, 2-0. Talked about Crick. He's struggled to give up home runs this year, especially of late. A home run apiece given up in back-to-back -back outings. He's given up two long shots here in the fourth inning. Three runs across in the fourth and a 7-5 Florence lead. Pitch home is a Half swing by DeNicola, and he went around two and one. Six 
Seven runs on seven hits for Florence. And the Otters, the numbers point to it. The Otters have really struggled this season when they give up more than five runs in a game. Otters are not a team that likes to get into a shooting. They typically don't win those. 2-1 home. Swing and a miss. 2-2. Two and two. What a wild game so far in terms of offense all over the board. Three in the first for the Owls, one in the third, three in the fourth. The Otters one in the first, two in the second, two in the third. 2-2 two, two home. High and a full count to Nicola. Still all of these runs for Florence, all seven runs have been with two outs. Otters just can't find that last out. 27 pitches now for Crick here in the inning. Payoff home, popped up out of play. Another payoff home, inside ball four. If you have a group of friends or coworkers who wish to come to historic Bossy Field and enjoy an Otters home game, contact the Otters front office to reserve a party deck on the Corona Extra Patio Deck. The Corona Extra Patio Deck is one of the best places to watch the game with an all-you-can-eat menu and unlimited bottled water and soft drinks. Call 812-435-8686 for more information on how you can book your next celebration. One on, two outs, and Nick Winmer is the bet. Comes home, a strike at the knees. Four straight batters a reach for Florence after Crick got the first two out in the inning. Solo homer by Fuentes, based it by Richardson, two run homer by Zuber, and now a walk to Nicola. Another pitch quickly in for a strike to Wimmers, and it's 0 2. Florence has scored four unanswered to quickly erase the two run deficit. O2 home. High, one ball and two strikes. Crick at the chest, delivers. Chopped right side through the 4-3 hole and into right field. Base hit for Wimmers, and Crick and the Otters just can't find that last strike. Batter after batter, Crick getting to two strikes, and that put away pitch just isn't there. Wimmers pokes one through the 4-3 hole. He is three for three today. A rookie catcher entered today, which is six hits on the season in 13 games. He has three hits today. Two singles and a double. And Johnson, the shortstop, comes up to try to put up a really crooked number now for Florence here in the fourth as they lead 7-5. to five. Jake Green out to chat with Crick, and the Otters have action in their bullpen. 38 pitches now for Crick here in the fourth inning. John Beamer went three for the Otters on a bullpen day. 78 pitches to throw three innings, but exited with the lead. Three have come across here for Florence to take the lead in the fourth off Crick. Ready, Ed Johnson at the plate, swings at the first pitch and fouls it away. Otters have lost three in a row to the Yalls, who at 14 and a half games back of first and nine under 500. A one outside, one ball and one strike to Johnson. To Nicola at second, Wimmers at first with two outs here in the bottom of the fourth. Florence has scored three in the fourth. One, one home. Lined left side pass Madison into left field, sent from third. Is DeNicola now held up at the last moment? Good throw in by Myers. And the bases are loaded for Florence at the last second. Florence's third base coach, Mike Morris, changing his mind and holding up DeNicola as Myers pretty quickly got to the ball and left and relayed it in. Good call. DeNicola would have been out by a mile. The bases are now loaded for Florence. And I think 
think that's going to do it for James Crick. Base hit for Ed Johnson has loaded the bases here for Florence. And Crick will exit. He got the first two outs of the inning, but things have fallen apart since then. Six straight batters have reached the ninth batter of the inning coming up. Lane Hoover up with two outs and the bases loaded. A 7-5 lead for Florence on the Evansville Otters Digital Network. Welcome back to Thomas Moore Stadium. Bases are loaded for Florence in the bottom of the fourth inning with two outs. And already with a 7-5 lead, the Otters are going to bring in a brand new arm. Johan Castillo just signed on Monday before the transaction deadline. Will make his Otters debut. He's a lefty from Rancho Cucamonga, California, outside of Los Angeles. Played four years, not too far, or make it three years, not too far away from here in Florence at Georgetown College in Georgetown, Kentucky, an NAIA school about 30 minutes outside of Lexington. Just graduated there this past spring, had a really good career at Georgetown College with a 3.46 ERA, made 37 starts and 20 wins over three years there. He made his pro, de pro debut up in Oregon a couple weeks ago in the Mavericks League, and now the lefty comes in here with the bases loaded. His first pitch strike is in Delane Hoover. Bases loaded for Florence with two outs in the four. Three runs have come across for the Oms. Lefty on lefty matchup. The 0-1 home from Castillo. A slider on the outside corner. Strike again, 0-2. Two. two seam fastball change up in slider for Castillo. Just the third appearance of his professional career. What a way to start with the bases loaded. Working out of the stretch on the far left side of the rubber. Black Glove sets the belt, takes a deep breath, and the 0-2 to Hoover. Check swing on a pitch outside. Green picks it up. Appeal down to third, but Hoover held up. Hoover's 0 for 2 today, trying to blow the game open for Florence here in the fourth inning. One, two, home. High chopper over the head of Castillo, charging into field at his bow's throw to first, not in time. A high chopper by Hoover Boast. Couldn't charge it in time. A throw to first just late. DeNicola scores from third, and it's eight to five, y'all. Runners go station to station. It's one, it's just over the head of Castillo, and it's just too soft, especially on an artificial turf field, for Boast to get a speedy runner. So back to the top of the order, and Hank Zeisler is the alls have batted around, and he takes the first pitch eye for a ball. It's Wimmers at third, Johnson at second, Hoover at first with two outs, and an 8-5 lead for Florence. Four runs across here in the fourth. 1-0 home, breaking ball on the outside corner, 1-1 one one on a nifty slider from Castillo. Castillo works out of a stretch, gets down in a low crouch with his left arm dangling by his knee. He looks in for the sign from Green, has it. Size the shoulder, sets at the belt, small kick and a throw, and a swing and a miss on a changeup. One and two. Otters desperately looking for this last out to escape this inning with the game still in reach, trailing by just three. One, two. Breaking balls high, two and two. I mean, the Crick out the first two outs of the inning. They were both loud flyouts. Good plays made by Myers and Quiggle, respectively, but. Now 
seven straight batters a reach for Florence. 2-2 two -two is just hacked foul by Zeisler. She's got a piece of the baseball to stay alive. It's a lot easier said than done, finding that strike three. The hardest out of the inning is the third out, and the hardest strike of an at-bat is always the third strike. It's felt especially hard, though, for the honors in the month of August. 2-2 two -two outside, and a full count to Zeisler. Full count to Zeisler and nowhere to put him. Castillo delivers. It's outside for ball four. And a walk home Wimmers from third. It's a five run inning for Florence. And it's nine to five. Can I get a shirt? Eight in a row have reached for the Alls and they're running up, running out of shirts up here in the press box with five runs across in the inning. It's the lefty Tristan Garcia, second time up in the inning. Takes a first pitch strike down the middle from the lefty Castillo. Johnson at third, Hoover at second, Zeisler at first with two outs. 0-1 home, popped up by Garcia, headed my way and had a play. Up on top of the press box, 0-2. I think every batter, it's felt like every batter, has gotten to two strikes. And the Otters just can't get the last strike. Eight straight y'alls have reached, and they've scored five here in the fourth. The 0-2. Breaking ball is high. One ball and two strikes. Garcia, the 11th batter to come to the plate here for the y'alls in the fourth inning. 1-2. Outside, two balls and two strikes. All nine runs for Florence have scored with two outs today. 2-2 two -two from Castillo. Swing and a miss. Ball in the dirt, but the base is loaded. The inning is mercifully over. Five in the fourth for Florence. It started with a Fuente solo home run. Zuber falling with a two-run homer from there. A walk. Three straight base hits and another walk, and it amounts to five runs in the fourth inning for Florence. After four innings played, it's 9-5, y'all's over the Otters on the Evansville Otters Digital Network. to Florence. It's a 9-5 lead for the Alls over the Otters, and a game is almost as messy as the loaded tater tots I had before the broadcast. The Alls score five runs in the bottom of the fourth inning to retake the lead, and Otters' bullpen day not going too well for Evansville, but the Otters will now face the Florence bullpen as Ross Thompson is the first arm out of the pen for the Alls. He makes his third appearance of the season, a 7.36 ERA and 7 in the third innings pitch. Rookie pitcher allowed six runs on seven hits and two and a third innings pitch in his last outing last Thursday against Gateway, but he did pitch well in five shutout innings out of the bullpen for the Yalls against Windy City two weeks ago. It's the third appearance of the season for the righty pitcher. They'll face Kona Quiggle 
to lead things off here in the fifth for the honors. Mary Hudson has talked, had long conversations with multiple pitchers. I don't know what the deal is. And Chad Rhodes wants to know what the deal is, and the Alls manager is out to chat with Hudson about what the issue is. They're going to give him a strike for a, a pitch clock violation. And now the third base umpire, Ben Levin, wants to know what this is all about. He's the crew chief, and our delay will last further here. We're just in the top of the fifth inning, almost two hours into baseball tonight. Now they're messaging up to the pitch clock for some more information here up in the booth. They've got a walkie-talkie down there. They can communicate up with the score and the pitch clock operator up here. Thomas Moore Stadium. And they're going to wipe the violation away now. So a lot to do about nothing as the ready Ross Thompson gets set to pitch here against Kona Quiggle. Ready out of the bullpen is Ryan Watson went just four innings today for Florence. Side armor comes around and a first pitch misses low for a ball. The Otters led by two runs entering the fourth inning, or entering the third inning. They all scored one in the third and then five in the fourth to retake the lead. Pitch misses low to Quiggle and it's two and up. Duo from the ready Thompson. It's low, three balls and no strikes to Quiggle. And the second baseman Harrison DeNicola must not like the calls because he's putting his hands up in the air. This feels like an evening that could go on for a while in a game that may not be decided right away. There's ball four outside. Hmm. Not a auspicious start for Ross Thompson. A four pitch walk to Quiggle to start here in the fifth and the Otters when you have a big inning like that, five runs come across in the fourth, you want to answer right back and keep the momentum going. And Quiggle starts that well with a walk. So he's aboard at first, and it brings up Jeffrey Baez, one for two today with a single back in the third inning. He also lead nine to five in the top of the fifth inning. Thompson home, and it misses outside to Baez, one and zero. Oh. That's five straight balls to start for the righty. Graduate of Heidelberg University and a native of Wadsworth, Ohio. Steps off, fires back to first, and Quiggle dies back into the bag safely. Now we talk with some of the Alls guys. I mean, it's just the pitching staff struggled so much early in the season, and veterans didn't work out, and most of this bullpen is guys that have been signed over the last month, a whole lot of young rookie pitchers. 1-0. Breaking ball outside, two balls and no strikes to Baez. And a lot of guys that have shown some good flashes, but having so many rookies on your staff is obviously challenging for the Yalls. Certainly seen some promising results here in the month of August and might have a good core of pitchers for next year. The 2-0 on the inside corner is strike, 2-1 to Baez. 4.75 ERA for the Yalls in the month of August entering this series. Their ERA, though, second to last in the Frontier League, only ahead of Empire State. And over six points. The 2-1 outside, down to second goes Quiggle. Bad throw by Wimmers is way towards the third base bag, to the left of the second base bag. And the Nicola had to race way over to get it, so a stolen base for Kona Quiggle. It's the third bag taken of the day by the Otters, and the first for Quiggle is 12th of the season. So Kona in scoring position with nobody out. 2-2 count to Baez. Thompson at the belt, delivers. Outside corner, strike three call. <laughs> One away in the fifth. Quiggle still at second, and it brings up Dakota Phillips. What a day so far for Dak. A 411-foot home run in the third inning for Phillips, which at the time gave the honors a two-run lead. He had a single back in the first inning as well. A two-hit day for Dak. Playing in his 60th straight game today. Hasn't had a day off since June 1st. First pitch home, misses low for a ball.
1-0. Swaying and a miss, 1-1. One and, one. and Phillips has been on the Otters so long that you look at the youngest Otter players, Austin Bose, born in 2000, and Johan Castillo just came in for the Otters out of the bullpen. The first ever Otters pitcher born in the 2000s. Those guys were starting college when Phillips started his honors career as the 1-1 is fouled away. Dak in his fourth year on the Otters and starting to really rise up the franchise record books in a lot of categories. Today is his 254th game played in Evansville, which is the fifth most in Otters history. One, two count to Phillips with Quiggle at second. The pitch, swing and a miss on a fastball, two away. Phillips swings through a fastball. There's two outs with Quiggle still at second, and it brings up Yomar Reyes. The honors trail nine to five here in the top of the fifth. Thompson home, and Reyes fouls it off the screen. Five runs in the fourth inning for Florence to retake the lead as they try to Win back-to-back -back series against the Otters. These teams will play for the fourth time this season, the third time in August. Next weekend at Bossy Field to wrap up the home schedule for Evansville. 0-1, oh, fouled again, straight back, 0-2. Oh, O2 oh, home, outside, one ball and two strikes. Otters have lost 12 of their last 16 on the road, five straight road series. They've lost five of their last six series played. And enter today, so here's the one two home. Popped up into right center field, taking Zeisler back, looking up, goodbye. Yomar Reyes, a two-run home run, and the Otters cut the lead in half to two. A line drive home run by Reyes. His sixth home run of the season, the third home run of the day for the Otters. And the lead's trimmed down to two. It's now nine to seven, Florence. Otters looking for an energy boost after a deflating bottom of the fourth, and they get it from Yomar on a 379-foot homer that didn't have a lot of air under it, just a line drive that bounced off the second row of billboards over the right field wall. Three homers all to right for the Otters. Brian Rosario steps in, shows Bun, and pulls it back 1-0. I'm listing some depressing stats for the Otters, and... Evansville's bats trying to say, hold on just yet. This can be still a win for the Otters. Plenty of baseball up to play tonight. The 1-0 at the knees for a strike. 1-1 one one to Rosario. That's now three two-run homers by the Otters that have been their last six runs. 1-1. One, one. Inside, two balls and one strike to Rosario. Otters have seven runs on six hits, no errors. Florence, nine runs on ten hits, one error. And just a offensive shootout tonight from Thomas Moore Stadium. 2-1. Chopped left side over the shortstop. Johnson to field it, bobbles in, it falls on the turf. Rosario safe at first. It's going to be the second error of the game for Ed Johnson, the rookie shortstop. Tried to backhand the baseball instead of playing it back a few more hops. Charged it hard and it fell out of his glove. So Rosario at first, a chance to steal another bag for Brian Rosario. He's tied for second most stolen bags in the league as Jake Green comes to the plate. Green's one for two today. Pitch home, outside for a ball to Green. Rosario stole his 43rd base last night, which put them in a tie for second in the league with Schomburg's Chase Dawson for the most stolen bases in the Frontier League. 1-0, Rosario takes off, pitch outside, throw down to second, is hopped by Wimmers into center field. Rosario steps up, heads down to third. Here's the throw from center, not in time, and Rosario goes all the way from first to third. 
Wimmers bounced the throw away in front of second base. It bounced over everyone's head, and Rosario steals second for his 44th stolen base of the season and advances to third. He's at 44 stolen bases and now six away from tying the most ever in an honor single season of 50. So Rosario 90 feet away, and now a 2-0 count to Green. Thompson home, Green fouls it straight back, two and one. Two across here in the fifth off Ross Thompson, the first arm out of the Florence bullpen. A two-run home run for Yomar Reyes. Rosario reaching on an E6, dealing second and advancing on another air. As Green chops one left side, just foul to the left of the third base back. 2-2 two, two count to Green with two outs and a runner at third. Otters have scored in four of five innings today. Y'alls have scored in three of their first four innings they've come to the plate. It's a 9-7 game and it's just the top of the fifth. 2-2 two, two home. Popped up by Green, high in the late evening sky and shallow right center. Three purple jerseys converging. It's the center fielder, Zuberer, who makes the running catch for the third out of the inning. The Otters get two runs back, a two-run home run by Yomar Reyes, the third two-run homer of the day for the Otters, and they trail 9-7. to seven. Middle of the fifth, you're listening to Evansville Otters Baseball on the Evansville Otters Digital Network. Bottom of the fifth inning from Florence. It's a nine to seven lead for the Yoles over the Otters as we move to the bottom of the fifth inning. Offensive bounds on a overcast Wednesday night outside of the Queen Cincy of Cincinnati. Two run homer by Yomar Reyes in the fifth inning responding from a five run fourth for the Yoles. And now Johan Castillo, the lefty newcomer for the Otters will try to eat up some innings for the Otters. He'll face Brian Fuentes to lead off the fifth in the first pitch. This is low for a ball. Castillo making his honors debut. The 1-0 on the outside corner is strike one and one. Had a base hit and a walk come across on his tab in the fifth before striking out Tristan Garcia to get out of the bases loaded jam. As he fires a strike in on the outside corner to Fuentes, one and two. Castillo works really quickly. Here's the one-two home. Swing and a miss. Change up falling out of the zone and there's one away. And you gotta be crafty if you're an NAIA guy. You've made it to the pro levels. You gotta be smart and crafty and Castillo, clearly a guy when he gets on a roll, he just wants the ball back and we'll go right back to work. Letting go of the ball, about 10 seconds left on the pitch clock. And there's only about five seconds that goes by by the time the ball reaches the mid of green and he's throwing it back. Here's the throw home in for a strike, and now the clock starts as soon as Castillo gets it back with 15. Sets it the belt, takes a little bit longer of a pause here, and here's the 0-1 home. Seven seconds went by as it misses low, one and one to Zade Richardson. One-one home from the lefty, sails high, two balls and one strike. 
Castillo we were mentioning made his pro debut earlier this month in the Mavericks League, Independent Baseball League in Salem, Oregon. The 2-1, a breaking ball on the outside corner. 2-2 two and two to Richardson. He had two appearances there, including a start with the Campesinos de Salem Kaiser. The Mavericks League, a new indie ball league, a 14 pod league around Salem, Oregon. Here's the 2-2 home. Swing and a miss, change up in the dirt. Richardson strikes out, and Castillo struck out three straight batters. The outers badly looking for some pitching consistency tonight, and Castillo off to a great start here in the fifth inning. Back-to-back -back case as it brings up Ray Zuber, the center fielder, who had a go-ahead home run for the Yalls, two-run homer in the fourth. Empires are meaning again to talk about something. I don't know what, what it's been all night. Larry Hudson, especially at home, has been talking with pitchers and coaches, and the umpires have met a few times. Continuing to discuss something that's only lengthening a game that's over two hours. We're in, we're in the bottom of the fifth. And now Chad Rhodes is being called out to talk with Larry Hudson. This is the third time Rhodes and Hudson have been having a talk. So Ray Zuber will come to the plate here for Florence. Two outs and nobody on in the fifth. The Otters trying to give Florence just their second inning scoreless today. So the Otters trail nine to seven here in the bottom of the fifth. Southpaw Castillo ready and fires home to the lefty Zuber for spit strike. So Castillo two games in the Mavericks League for his pro debut. Now here signed by the Otters on Monday, the 0-1. Swing and a miss 0-2. He started his summer in the South Southern California Collegiate League with the California Jays. That's also a pod-based league with a bunch of teams located in Palm Springs, California. 0-2 home. Hacked off the end of the bat, off the screen. Zuber spoils the 0-2 to stay alive. That was all after he finished his collegiate career this spring with Georgetown College at the NAIA level. So it's been a busy spring and summer for Castillo and was getting a lot of calls from a bunch of Frontier League and other indie ball teams right ahead of these transaction deadlines in early August. Decided to pick the Otters. The 0-2 grounded right side and Zuber stays alive. Ball rolls all the way out into the right field wall. And Jeffrey Baez is slowly jogging out to get it. And tossing it onto the grassy Berman right where some kids are frolicking around in the grass. O2 count. Breaking ball just missed outside. One ball and two strikes. No sign has gone down in order today. Castillo's trying to do the impossible on this high-scoring Wednesday night. The one-two. Lined high in the air to right field, taking Jeffrey Baez back. Bounces over his head and off the wall. Baez picks it up, throws the second, head first slide. Out of the Zuber in second. Jeffrey Baez, what a throw. A bullet. From the right field, warning track on the money. And Mattis' tag beats out Zuber to end the inning. One of the better throws you'll see all night across professional baseball from Jeffrey Baez in right. A dart of a throw to throw out Zuber. And Castillo faces the minimum in the fifth. After five innings played tonight, it's Florence 9, Evansville 7 on the Evansville Otters Digital Network.
Welcome back to Florence, Kentucky. Nine to seven lead for the Yulls over the Ops as we move to the top of the sixth inning. Evansville has trailed, led, and trailed again in this ball game. Otters scored in four or five innings today, seven runs on six hits, but three of those hits, two run home runs. The Otters getting a one, two, three inning in the fifth inning by way of Johan Castillo and Jeffrey Baez throwing out. Ray Zuber trying to get a double. Austin both swings at the first pitch. He sees and lines it down the left field line all the way to the wall. Both hustling to second, standing up with a leadoff double. Boast out of the ninth spot, lining one over the head of Brian Fuentes down the left field line. Boast is spraying them down the third base line. His first two outs were both line drives caught by Fuentes at third, but this one hit too high and too hard for Fuentes at third and all the way into the corner. An easy double for Boast on the first pitch he sees out of the hand of Ross Thompson. Thompson, the reliever, in for his second inning of work for Florence. Fires the first pitch outside for a ball to Noah Myers. Myers is yet to be retired today. Two walks and a two-run home run in the second. He scored twice. 1-0 home. At the knees for a strike. One ball and one strike to Myers. Seven runs on seven hits, no errors for Evansville. Nine runs on 11 hits, three errors for Florence. 1-1 one, one home is sliced off the end of the bat, right back to the pitcher Thompson. He fires to first to get Myers, but down to third base goes Boast. Not a bad result there for the honors on the 1-3 ground out. Advances a runner 90 feet away, which is one out as Gary Mattis comes to the plate for the Otters. Mattis is 0 for 3 today, reached on an air in the first. Otters trail 9 to 7 here in the top of the six with one out. Pitch home from Thompson, a looping breaking ball, in for a strike at the knees. A one home. Line to the left field, he'll get down for a base hit. Bose will score from first, big turnaround first by Mattis, he holds up as a good cutoff by Hoover to field the ball down the left field line. But an RBI base hit for Gary Mattis, trims the lead to one. First run across in the six for the Otters and they've scored three unanswered against Ross Thompson. Florence scored five in the fourth to retake the lead. The Otters two in the fifth and now one here in the sixth. One on, one out as Kona Quiggle comes to the plate. One for two today with a walk in the fifth and came around to score. Mattis, a three stride lead at first. Quiggle swings and lines the first pitch to right, but right at Hank Seisler, who reaches up the glove. Right fielder makes the catch for the second out of the inning. Just like that, two outs. Mattis still at first, and the right fielder, Jeffrey Baez, coming to the plate. This has been a quick sixth inning, but the Otters have gotten a run across Ross Thompson's, who's hit 33 pitches out of the bullpen here for Florence. Steps off, throw back to first. Mattis dives back in, head first slide safely. Lights are on, pretty much into full effect as the skies overcast all evening have almost fully darkened here in Florence. Pitch home to Baez. Line down the left field line, this is a fair ball. Racing over is Hoover, he'll let it pop off the wall. Mattis hustling to third safely will be head there and Baez into second with a stand up double. Baez looping one down the left field line for his second hit of the day and the Otters have two in scoring position with two outs here in the sixth. Mattis at third, Baez at second, and Dakota Phillips comes to the plate. Tying run at third for the Otters. Go ahead run at second base for Evansville. And Carl Craigie, the y'all's pitching coach, have to talk with Ross Thompson, who has not looked very sharp out of the bullpen here for Florence. Eight runs on nine hits for the Otters. They've scored now in five of six innings today. The difference still for Florence, the five runs they put up in the fourth. The Otters 
Haven't put a, together a really big number on the scoreboard yet. So they trail nine to eight here, and Dakota Phillips coming to the plate. Dak is two for three today, including a mammoth 411 foot home run in the third inning. Two in scoring position with two out, first pitch home. Misses outside, one and oh to the lefty Phillips. Dak trying to give the Otters the lead back here in the sixth inning. 1-0. Outside, two balls and no strikes to Phillips. Otters have already led twice today, only for the Owls to take leads back. Trailing 9-8 here in the sixth. 2-0 from Thompson. Check swing on a ball in the dirt. Appeal down to third base. Phillips held up. 3-0. First base is empty. Yomar Reyes, who hit a home run in his last at bat, coming up. 3-0 home. Outside corner of strike, 3-1 to Phillips. Mattis at third, Baez at second. Two outs in the top of the sixth inning, and the honors trailing 9-8. Thompson at the belt, the 3-1. Looping, breaking ball, pretty pitch right down the middle for a strike. Change up that settled into the heart of the zone. And Thompson has worked it full against Phillips. This is a big payoff pitch here. Thompson out of the stretch. Long look in, sets at the belt. Kick in around from the side armor. Line to the left field, down for a base hit. Mattis will score. Baez is sent from third. The throw in from Zeisler is cut off. And the take the lead. Dakota Phillips, a two RBI, base it to right, makes it 10 to nine Evansville. Five unanswered by the Otters. This game's gone fully bonkers tonight from Florence. Third hit of the day for Dakota Phillips. With two outs, Baez from second. With Deceivingly good speed, scored standing up from second base by the time Zeisler collected in right and threw in. The day's done for Thompson. The Otters batter him for five pitches and Christian Cosby coming into the game for Florence. The Otters trailed by four, they now lead by one. Three in the six, it's 10 to nine. Otters in front on the Evansville Otters Digital Network. Welcome back to Florence, a wild one tonight here from Thomas Moore Stadium. The Otters have scored five unanswered to take a 10 to nine lead. Three runs across in the sixth inning and the Alls having to make another call to the bullpen. They bring in Christian Cosby out of the pen. He'll face Yomar Reyes with Dakota Phillips at first and two outs in the inning. Phillips with a two out, two RBI base hit to put the Otters in front. First pitch to Reyes, a strike on the outside corner. Cosby making just his second appearance of the season. Big, tall righty pitched three innings in his first outing. Allowed three hits and two runs with two home runs coming across off his tab as Reyes fouls one away, 0-2. Oh 
Just another, as we were mentioning, tons of young rookies recently signed by Florence in this very inexperienced bullpen. 6'5", 215-pound righty delivers high. One ball and two strikes. Started his year playing in the Midwest League, the Quad City River Bandits, Kansas City Royals affiliates. So at least a guy with a little bit more experience here for Florence. The 1-2 chopped off the end of the bat and off home plate. Foul on the count stays 1-2. and two. Under the full effect of the lights, here at Thomas More Stadium for a game that feels like it's headed to close to four hours tonight. One, two home. Swing and a miss. And Cosby with a big slider to strike out Reyes and retire the side. The Otters retake the lead. Austin Bose started the inning with a double and came around to score on a Mattis base hit. And then it was Dakota Phillips with a two out, two RBI base hit to give the Otters a 10 to nine lead. Middle of the sixth inning, Otters in front on the Evansville Otters Digital Network. Ten to nine lead for the Otters over the Yalls as we move to the bottom of the sixth inning from Florence, Kentucky. We're two and a half hours into baseball tonight and still not out of the sixth inning. Florence scored five runs in the fourth inning to retake the lead. The Otters said we got more left in the tank. They scored two in the fifth, three in the sixth off Ross Thompson out of the Florence bullpen. And the Otters going to their new pitcher again, Johan Castillo for a second straight inning. Look good in the fifth, trying to keep the Otters now in front here in the sixth inning. Southpaw just signed by the Otters on Monday and making his third ever appearance in pro ball. Will face the lefty Harrison DeNicola to lead off in the bottom of the sixth. First pitch sails high for a ball to DeNicola. Lines and deliver, swing and a miss. One and one. Castillo came in and a bases loaded jam in the fifth. Allowed a base hit and a walk, but since then has looked terrific. The 1-1 one, one home. Check swing on a ball that misses low. Two balls and one strike. Struck out the last batter to get out of the jam in the fifth and struck out the first two batters in the sixth before an assist from Jeffrey Baez in right field who threw out Ray Zuber trying to stretch a single into a double. DeNicola pops one up into left field. Coming in is Myers a few steps under the baseball and makes the catch. One away in the bottom of the sixth. Want to make your lawn and landscape look like a field of dreams? Well, you can also use wild horticulture for landscape design that is truly unique. Look to locally owned wild horticulture, whether you need a team to design and construct a large scale landscape project for your business, or looking to create an epic backyard retreat, compete with plants, water, and light installation, the experienced team at Wild can take your ideas to the next level. Nick Wimmer steps in and takes the first pitch outside for a ball. Wild Horticulture has the skills and resources to deliver inspiring spaces and bring your ideas to life. Have a project in mind? Find them on Instagram at wildspaces.com. 1-0 count to Wimmers with one out of nobody on in the sixth. Lefty home, the righty swings and pops one up into left field. Myers racing in and makes a jogging catch, two away. Two quick outs for Castillo here in the sixth. And the Otters on a bullpen day Badly needing someone to both eat up outs and be effective in a close game are getting both from the new lefty, Johan Castillo. 
What a pickup it's looking like for Max Peterson and this Otter's staff. Needing a new pitcher with injuries and movement right before the transaction deadline. Castillo, the first new pitcher the Otters have picked up midseason all year. And Johnson, the new batter, fouls a pitch off. He took a first pitch ball, so it's now one and one. And Castillo just works so quickly, especially with no one on. Certainly keeps me on my toes, and it keeps the alls off balance. The 1-1 one -one is lined into center field. Quiggle racing in, it will one up in front of him, and Johnson has a base hit. So now a 1-2-3 inning, and Johnson keeps it going with his third hit of the ball game. A line drive base hit into center, and it brings up Lane Hoover, the left fielder. Hooper one for three today. The first pitch to the lefty, looping breaking ball sails high. Otters lead 10 to nine here in the bottom of the sixth inning. Pitch black skies now, lights in full effect. The 1-0 is fouled left side and out of play. Castillo wearing number eight. We mentioned he's a native of Southern California. Was excited to choose number eight. After Kobe Bryant, big Lakers fan. 1-1, one, one, slice foul again off the screen, one and two. He didn't have too many numbers to choose from as a new addition, but eight was available. And Castillo very happy to pick up that number. Three stride lead at first for Johnson. Here's the one, two home. It's slice foul again, left side and out of play. Castillo looking for the last out of the six and give the honors a lead into the final three innings. It's just been a stupid game tonight here at Thomas More Stadium. Teams have traded five run unanswered runs. The one, two, chop left side, right to Madison Short. He tosses to second, Bo steps on the bag for the force out to retire the side. Johan Castillo, two scoreless innings completed after the Otters bullpen. And after six innings played, it's Evansville 10, Florence 9 on the Evansville Otters Digital Network. Six innings complete from Florence. A 10-9 lead for the Otters over the Yalls. Brian Rosario leads off to the top of the seventh for Evansville. Switch hitter batting lefty. First pitch home from Christian Cosby. He swung on and missed. 0-1. Oh Cosby came in with two outs and one on in the sixth and got the last down of the inning. Otters have scored five unanswered to retake a lead that they had two times earlier in the game. 0-1. Oh Slice right side, playing it back on a hop. The first baseman, Richardson, will race to the bag and meet Rosario there, one away. Time for a check of the Frontier League out-of-town scoreboard brought to you by WJPS 107.1.
How about this game, which is right now on pace to go four hours? Washington and Gateway played a game this evening in Western Pennsylvania that was done before the third inning was over here. It took just an hour and 56 minutes. And Washington shuts out Gateway five to nothing. Jake Green takes the first pitch inside for a ball. Grizzlies have dropped the first two games in their series at Washington. The 1-0 is sliced off the bat of Green, right at the shortstop Johnson, and reaches up the glove and makes the catch two away. Two quick outs, much needed here for Cosby and Florence in the seventh. So two outs, it brings up Boston Bose to the first, second baseman. There's going to be a brief stoppage here in the middle of the seventh as there's going to be an on-field ceremony for cancer survivors on Strikeout for Cancer Night here at the ballpark. Pitch home from Bost to Bost. Misses outside 1 0. Should just be a couple minutes stoppage. But that will delay this long game even a little bit more. 1 0 to Bost. Fouled away 1 and 1. So Washington beats Gateway. The Otters really would like to win tonight. The Wild Things with a win and an Otters loss would just be four and a half back of Evansville for that last playoff spot. It's a weird series. I don't know if the Otters really want either of those teams to win, Gateway or Washington, but the Otters six games back of first place Gateway. Still a shot to win the division. Granted, an outside shot at this point. Grizzlies off to a slow start on their six-game road trip, dropping the first two. Schaumburg, who's three games up at the honors for second place in the West, leads Lake Erie 4-3. to three. Boomers lost a close one last night to the Crushers and playing another close one this evening from Avon, Ohio. 1-1 one, one home. Popped up by Boast, high in the sky down the right field line. First baseman Richardson reaching up, called up by the second baseman DeNicola, who makes the catch for the third out of the inning. The impossible has been completed, a 1-2-3 inning. It's time to stretch here at Thomas More Stadium. It's a 10-9 lead for the Otters. There'll be a brief delay on the field, and we'll take the brief delay with them. So stand by as we have a brief on-field ceremony. We'll be back in a couple minutes here from Thomas More Stadium with the Otters leading the Alls 10-9 on the Otters Digital Network.
Welcome back to Florence, Kentucky, Thomas Moore Stadium. Great brief ceremony to honor cancer survivors on the field and strike out for cancer night. Couple extra minute delay here in the middle of the seventh. Kevin Davis now in for the Otters. Evansville holding on to a 10 to nine lead here from Florence. Davis making his 34th appearance of the season for the Otters, tied for the most on the team. 2.54 ERA for Davis, 60 strikeouts to just 25 walks. He's allowed just 11 earned runs all year and has not allowed a run in the month of August over seven and a third innings pitched. First pitch home from the ready to the top of the lineup, the lefty Hank Zeisler misses outside for a ball. High set for Davis at the chest, the 1-0 home. Right down the middle is strike on a 93 mile per hour fastball, one and one. 10 runs on 10 hits, no errors for Evansville. Nine runs on 12 hits, three errors for Florence. The Otters have scored five unanswered to retake the lead with two in the fifth, three in the sixth. The 1-1, one -one. this is low for a ball, two balls and one strike. Under the lights on a Wednesday night here from Florence, the Otters trying to even up this series at a game apiece and a wild one this evening. 2-1 is fouled away off the top of the netting, 2-2. Two two. The Otters do win this game. A huge tip of the cap to Johan Castillo, who worked the fifth and the sixth scoreless for the Otters out of the bullpen. Brand new reliever comes in and really did a good job for the Otters. 2-2, two two, swing and a miss. Zeisler strikes out on a fastball outside of the zone, and there's one away. First German-American bank strikeout for Kevin Davis. Just two base runners for Florence since the fourth inning when they scored five in the fourth to take the lead. Davis has the first out of the seventh. That brings up another lefty, Tristan Garcia. Davis home, fires a first pitch strike to Garcia. This is the biggest battle of contrast you can find in the Frontier League. 6-9 ready against a 5-5 lefty hitter. L1 is fouled away by the hitter, 0-2. His two face stop at Bossy a couple weeks ago as well. Feels like Garcia is half the height Davis is, especially with Kevin on the mound. Gets a couple other a couple extra inches even more on Garcia. 0-2 is fouled away again. One out, nobody on in the bottom of the seventh. The honors lead the Yells 10-9. It was 94 from Davis. Out of the windup, delivers. Slice foul right off the screen. Garcia fights off another. O2 oh, from Davis. Chopped right side, right to the second baseman, Bose collects and tosses the first in time for the second out of the inning. Two quick outs for Kevin Davis here in the seventh. Two-way brings up Brian Fuentes, the third baseman. Mentioned it's strikeout for cancer night here at the ballpark and brief on-game ceremony with cancer survivors walking out onto the field and getting an applause. The seventh inning stretch was then led by the Brenneman family. Marty Brenneman, the great longtime broadcaster for the Cincinnati Reds, as Brian Fuentes fouls the first pitch off. Marty, a legend here in Cincinnati, one of the great baseball broadcasters of all time here at the ballpark, and his wife Amanda threw out the first pitch. She successfully beat cancer. This is a game Marty comes to every year here with the Yalls, and him and his family leading the seventh inning stretch. As Fuentes takes the ball low, one and one. Always excited to be broadcasting a game when you have a broadcasting luminary in the stands. 1-1, one, one, misses low again. Two balls and one strike to Fuentes. Former Cincinnati Red as well, Tracy Jones here at the ballpark. Also threw out a first pitch. 2-1, a broken bad flare up the middle. One ops to the shortstop, Mattis in front of the second base bag. Fires to first in time to beat Fuentes. And it's a in-order inning for Kevin Davis. He mows down the Yolves after seven innings complete. It's the Otters in front, 10 to nine on the Evansville Otters Digital Network.
A wild night at Thomas More Stadium as the Evansville Otters in front of the Florence Yalls 10 to nine as we go to the top of the eighth inning. The righty Christian Cosby has pitched well for Florence out of the pen and ending in a third scoreless for the Yalls. Trying to settle this game down for the Florence pitching. The Otters loving what they're seeing out of their bullpen. Kevin Davis a quick one, two, three, seventh for the Otters. And the new pitcher, Johan Castillo coming out of the pen for the Otters and pitching two and two thirds scoreless to calm things down on the Otters pitching end. Evansville's got a 10-9 lean and needs just six more outs to secure a win, but first looking for a little bit more run insurance as Noah Myers leads off for the Otters in the top of the eighth. Top of the lineup here for the Otters. Myers up for the fifth time today. He's one for two with two walks. First pitch home to Myers, a strike on the inner third. Otters have scored in five of seven innings played today. The big three run six putting them back in front. The 0-1 swing and a miss on a breaking ball low, 0-2. Pitch to a few more scores on the Frontier League out of town, WJPS 107.1 scoreboard. Wendy City came from behind to beat Joliet last night, 0-2. He swung on and lifted into right field. Back is Zeisler looking up, and it's off the warning track. Bounces off the wall. Myers hustling to second. He won't stop there. On his horse to third. The throw in is not time. Triple for Myers. The Otters going hunting for more three baggers. It's Evansville's 24th triple of the season. They're second in the series. Fires pounding one off the warning track in the wall in the right center gap. It took a while for Zeisler to get there. And Noah showing off his all American speed on his horse. Sliding in safely to her third ahead from the throw in right. Infield is in for Florence as Gary Mattis takes the first pitch inside for a ball. What a beautiful sight to see Noah Myers out running on the bases like that. So athletic and so fast. Mattis takes a strike on the inner third, one and one. The Otters lead the league in triples. That's their 24th triple of the season. Remarkable number. One, one. Inside, two balls and one strike to Mattis. 10-9 lead here for the Otters in the top of the eighth, looking for a little bit more insurance. Two one home, sliced, fell off the end of the bat, two and two. The Otters at 24 triples, they hit 27 last year, which tied the most in a single season in Otters history. They are well on pace with 17 games left to play after tonight to break that record, most triples in a season. Two two, sliced right side off the end of the bat. Myers will start to come home and then stop as Richardson steps on the bag and looks back Myers at third, one away in the eighth. So one out, Myers still at third. Good play by Richardson to backpedal and look back Myers, and it brings up Kona Quickle. How about Myers today, too? His stat line, he has a home run and a triple. Doesn't have a single or a double, but he has a home run and a triple to go with two walks, and he's trying to score his third run of the game as well. Infield still in for the lefty Quiggle, who swings and misses 0-1. Just got a piece of it, and the ball actually hit off Larry Hudson behind home plate, who is okay. Right off the top of the chest. That's why you wear a chest protector. And Marvin King either wants to give Larry Hudson more time or he's suspicious of if Cosby is using any substances on the ball. He looked at the ball and rubbed it around, but I think he was just giving Hudson a, a brief breather because he was hit in the shoulder. So no one count to Quiggle. Myers at third, the pitch home, outside, one ball and one strike. Five unanswered by the Otters, two in the fifth, three in the sixth to take a 10-9 lead. Trying to get some much needed insurance here in the eighth. One, one home. Popped up by Quiggle, high in the air into left field. This should score Myers. Back is Hoover, a few steps from the track, makes the catch. Myers will hustle home and score standing up without a throw. It's 11-9 Otters. The third run of the game for Myers. 
on a sack fly from Quiggle does his job. Hitting one almost all the way to the warning track. It's six unanswered runs scored by the Otters. Two outs and now the base is cleared for Jeffrey Bias. Eleven runs on eleven hits tonight for the Otters. They have three home runs. Up and down the lineup, everyone doing damage. First pitch home misses outside to Bias 1-0. Eight of nine batters for the Otters today have scored a run. They have hits from the top six in their lineup as Baez fouls one into the seats, one and one. And they've scored now. It's six of eight innings today. An electric offensive performance by the Otters this evening in Florence. One one from Cosby, swing and a miss, one and two to Baez. And a game the Otters really needed with Washington winning tonight at Gateway, Joliet. Cruising against Windy City up 11 to two. Teams chasing them in the playoffs. Otters did not want for the third straight series to drop the first two games. They're six outs away from getting a big middle game victory on this Wednesday night and forcing a rubber match tomorrow. One, two home, sliced up the middle, past the goal of Cosby into center field. They sit Baez. Make it a three hit day for Jeffrey Baez. Right over the glove of Cosby and into center. Baez a single in the third, a double in the sixth, and a single here in the eighth. He's got four hits on the week already here in Florence. One on, two outs for Dakota Phillips. Dak has three hits today, two singles, and a titanic two-run home run in the third inning. 411 feet onto the road behind the right field wall here at Thomas More Stadium. Cosby home to the lefty. This is, nope, catches the outside corner, check that, 0-1. I'm shaking my hat, as are a couple fans. They disagree with that call. That was way outside. It's been a long evening for everyone. The 0-1 is chopped off the end of the bat and off the side of the leg of Phillips, 0-2. Otters lead 11-9 now in the top of the eighth inning. 11 runs on 12 hits for the Otters. Nine runs on 12 hits, three airs for Florence. Phillips calling time. Reset himself here. Otters bullpen is quiet. Quick one, two, three inning by Kevin Davis in the seven. Looks like he'll come back out in the eighth and then it would set up for Jake Polancic to try to work the save in the ninth for the Otters. 0-2 to Phillips, Baez takes off, a chopper right back to Cosby and to his glove, tosses over to first for the third out of the inning. Retires the side, but the Otters get one more, a leadoff triple by Noah Myers. The Otters of the team have hit for a cycle and they lead 11-9, middle of the eighth from Florence on the Otters Digital Network. Bottom of the eighth from Thomas More Stadium. The Otters have scored six unanswered runs to take an 11-9 lead over the Florence Yalls. A wild back and forth game, but the Otters bats three home runs and some quality from the back half of their bullpen over the last few innings. They're six outs away from a big time Wednesday night victory. Otters have lost five straight Wednesday games. You have to go back to June 20th, the last time the Otters won a game on Wednesday. Trying to break that curse tonight. Even up this series at a game apiece in the second game of this six game road trip. Zade Richardson will lead things off for Florence against Kevin Davis who worked a very quick one, two, three, seventh for the Otters. He needed just 14 pitches in the seventh inning. A strikeout and two ground outs 
for an in-order seven. Davis on the right side of the rubber, out of the wind-up home at breaking ball sails high, 1-0. It's a bullpen day for the honors. John Beamer got the start. He allowed four, four runs. James Crick came in in the fourth and allowed five. A broken bat grounder left side by Richardson. Glove by Reyes. Throw across the diamond in time. to beat Richardson and there's one away. Yohan Castillo came in and worked two and a third scoreless innings in honors debut. And Kevin Davis has now retired the first four batters he's faced in order. Big deep breath by Davis as he gets ready to face the red hot lefty Ray Zuber. What a series for Zuber. He has five hits now. Two home runs, two doubles, and a single. First pitch to the lefty, a strike at the knees. Just two base runners for the Owls since the fourth inning after. They looked unstoppable early, scoring nine in the first four. The 0-1 fouled left side out of play, 0-2. And Otter's pitching staff that looked on the brink of collapse, really, to start this game, and you wondered how much they could even get through this game without maybe even having to throw a position player out there to pitch on a bullpen day. And instead, it's all come together. How delightful to see from an Otter's perspective. Zuber fouls one away, one and two. Davis on the right side of the rubber, flutters the glove and delivers, swing and a miss. Fastball at 94 up in the zone, strikes out Zuber, it's the second. German American Bank strikeout for Davis and there's two away in the eighth. Brings up the second baseman, Harrison DeNicola with two outs and nobody on and Davis trying to complete two straight perfect innings for the honors out of the pen. This would be a win to remember for the Otters. First pitch to Nicola, swing and a miss. Otters took an early 1-0 lead in the first. Y'all scored three in the bottom of the first. Evansville had answered with back-to-back -back innings with two run home runs. Myers at one in the second. Phillips at one in the third. Otters led by two, but then Florence scored six unanswered. The 0-1 to Nicola swung on and missed 0-2. One in the third and then five in the fourth inning, all coming across with two outs. Florence taking a four-run lead, but the Otters getting two back in the fifth on a Yomar Reyes two-run home run, and then three in the sixth with Dakota Phillips hitting the two-out, two-RBI, go-ahead base hit for the Otters. Evansville adding one more in the eighth inning for an 11-9 lead. Yo, two, fouled straight back off the screen. Twenty combined runs tonight, 24 combined hits between the two sides. Almost to three hours of baseball tonight. The 0-2, breaking ball sails high. One ball and two strikes to DeNicola. One, two, home. Popped up, behind home plate and out of play. DeNicola stays alive. Back to the Frontier League scoreboard. Mentioned Joliet leading Windy City big, 11-2. Thunderbolts came from behind last night. Troy Viola, the former Otter, had a go-ahead home run in the ninth inning for Windy City. Help out the Otters, trying to build some distance from the Slammers who were chasing them for that last playoff spot. The one-two, misses low, check swing by DeNicola, peel to third, he held up. Two balls and two strikes. Lake Erie has tied it in the bottom of the eighth against Schomburg. They're tied at four. The Otters could get a win and both Schomburg and Gateway a loss. Nothing but smiles across the board on the scoreboard for the honors. 2-2, two -two outside, the full count to DeNicola. Those are all your scores across the West this evening. Try City in a big series in the East, leading Quebec 4-1 in the bottom of the seventh from the Stade Canac. Payoff home, low for ball four, and DeNicola the first base runner to reach against Davis. One aboard with two outs. Nick Wimmers, the catcher, comes to the plate. It's been a career day for Wimmers in just his 14th game as a professional. He entered with just six hits. He's had three today, including two runs. Three for four. 
Another lefty batter here to face Kevin Davis. Davis twirls home. Wimmer swings and misses 0-1. Wimmers with a turquoise blue bat waggling over his shoulder. The 0-1 fouled off the screen, 0-2. Four outs away are the Otters from a come from behind victory. It'd be their first four run comeback victory of the season on the road. 0-2 count to Wimmers. Out of the windup, Davis delivers outside on a 93 mile per hour fastball, one and two. There is action in the Otters' bullpen. It's Jake Polancic just starting to warm up the Otters' closing. One, two to Wimmers. Swing and a miss. Fastball up at 94. Strikes out Wimmers and Kevin Davis. Two scoreless innings out of the bullpen for the Otters. We go to the ninth inning. Evansville in front, 11 to nine on the Evansville Otters Digital Network. To the ninth from Thomas More Stadium in Florence, Kentucky. It's been a night to be a fan of the bats. So 20 combined runs and the honors leading the Yalls 11 to nine. This middle game of a three game set. Final series of the year between these two with Thomas More. New pitcher into the ball game in the ninth for Florence. It's the righty Nick Ernst into the game before the Yalls trying to keep it just a two run game going to the bottom of the ninth. Ernst for Florence. Making just his fourth appearance of the season. Three innings pitched, yet to allow a run, five strikeouts. No walks, two hits. Ready comes home. Another new pitcher for Florence out of the pen. Fires the first pitch outside to Yomar Reyes. Reyes is one for four today, but he had the kickstarter for the Otters, the spark to get Evansville back in the game. 1-0. Chop foul left side and into the seats. One and one. Reyes, a two-run home run to right in the fifth inning. Responded after the five-run fourth for Florence. The honors trailed by four. Reyes, a two-out homer, got the cut the lead in half and really gave the honors the spark they needed. One and one. Swing and a miss on a slider outside of the zone. One and two. 11-9 lead for the Otters here in the top of the ninth. Florence will have 8-9-1 coming up in the ninth. And the Otters' closer, Jake Polancic, is warming up in the bullpen. 1-2, swing and a miss. Slider outside of the zone, one away. Brings up Brian Rosario, the designated hitter, here with one out in the ninth. Mentioned stand-up to cancer night. Marty Brenneman here at the, at the ball game with his family. Former MLB player Tracy Jones getting his bobblehead handed out as well. Played with the Reds for a few seasons, a few other MLB teams as well. Nine years in the big leagues. He was wearing custom purple jerseys, part of a stand-up for cancer night 
here at the ballpark. It's been a fun evening as it always is here at Thomas More Stadium. Brian Rosario takes the first pitch I want to know. I've had my own fun too. Loaded tater tots before the ball game were delicious, though maybe a little too messy before our broadcast. 1 0 to Rosario. Outside, corner, call it a strike, 1 and 1. Had some coleslaw and corn on top of the tater tots with a, a little bit of barbecue sauce as well. They were delicious. Big thanks to the voice of the Alls, Anthony Mazzini. And getting them free of charge as well. Rosario takes a strike on the inside corner, one and two. And then this last break in between innings, I have to throw out a couple eyeball balls from the Y'all's press box. They have a doctor's office, eye doctor, that sponsors the Y'all's, and they throw out stress balls with eyes on them out into the crowd. Got to test out my arm. Here comes the one-two home. This is low, two balls and two strikes. Tried to see if I could nail a couple fans on the back of the head, but I missed all in good fun. There's a lot of objects that come flying out of this Y'all's press box. They throw out t-shirts as well out of the crowd whenever the Y'all score a run. The 2-2, two -two, Rosario fouls left side and into the seats. It's been a fun night at the ballpark, but the Otters offense is certainly been the most fun thing about it if you're wearing in blue and white tonight. 11 runs on 12 hits and have scored in five innings with three home runs. 2-2 two -two count to Rosario coming from Ernst. Pitch home, breaking ball sliced down the right field line, just fouled with the right of the first base back. Past the three hour mark of baseball tonight. It's been a long night. It's been just one run scored though since the top of the six. That's how long this game started. They also had all nine runs after the fourth inning. The Otters have scored six unanswered to take a two run lead. 2-2 from Ernst. Shocked foul by Rosario off the netting and into the Otters dugout. The kid wants the ball. He's waving his arms at the Otters dugout. Up and down like a tarmac guy trying to direct a plane. Still waving his arms. They haven't noticed him in the Otters dugout. Not sure they are. The 2-2 chopped right side. Charging in the second baseman to Nicoletta Glovett. Underhand tossed to first in time for the second out. Two outs, nobody on here in the top of the ninth. Brings up the catcher, Jake Green. The Otters lead 11-9. The Otters closer, Jake Polancic, slated to come in in the ninth inning. Green's 0 for 3 today. And he scored a run, walk back in the second, and scored on a Noah Myers two-run home run. Ernst comes home. Green takes the breaking ball outside for a ball, one and up. 11 to nine, the Otters lead, two outs in the ninth. Florence will have it Johnson, Lane Hoover, and Hank Zeisler do up in the bottom of the ninth against Polancic. 1-0 delivery, fouled off the screen, one and one. Otters trying to end a three game losing streak to Florence. Even up the series at a game apiece. Get a much needed victory after they last week had just two wins, both in the series finales of their two series. The 1 1. Check swing by Green on a pitch outside. Appeal down to first. Green held up 2 and 1. Otters enter today losers of five of their last seven games. Two one to Green. Outside, three balls and one strike. You want a game that turns things around really for the Otters. Build some momentum and you peak going into the playoffs. Maybe a big comeback like tonight is the night to do it. The second game of this road trip. 
3-1, chopped up the middle, over to the right to shortstop. Johnson fields it to the left of the bag, throws the first in time to beat Green by a stride, and the Otters go down in order in the top of the ninth. Jake Polancic, the Otters' closer, coming into the game, looking to get the last three outs and give the Otters the victory. They're in front 11-9 on the Otters' digital network. Jake Polancic into the ball game for the Otters in the bottom of the ninth with Evansville three outs away from a big Wednesday night victory over Florence. They've scored a six unanswered to take an 11-9 lead into the bottom of the ninth. Polancic, the Otters' terrific closer, making his 24th appearance of the season. He's 12 for 14 on save opportunities this year. Overall, a 1.75 ERA. His 12 saves tied for third most in the Frontier League and lead the West Division. He's had, had a terrific July. Allowed, did not allow a run in eight appearances, and so far just one unearned run allowed in the month of August, though. Things got tricky for him on Sunday in his last appearance against Washington. He allowed a hit and a walk and hit a batter, but ended up working out of a jam with an assist from Jeffrey Baez throwing out a runner at the plate and earned the save in that game for the Otters on Sunday. Ed Johnson, the shortstop, batting eighth for Florence, leads off here in the ninth. What a day it's been for Johnson. He's three for four for Spicho, misses low for a ball. Shortstop with three singles, his last three at bats. Hoover, the number nine batter, will follow, and then the top of the order in Zeisler after that. The 1 0, pulled outside. Two balls and no strikes to Johnson. Polancic. Feels like he's gotten into a bad habit of late of getting himself in trouble, but every time he manages to escape the problems. 2-0 at the knees for a strike. Two balls and one strike to Johnson. 11-9 lead for the Otters in the bottom of the ninth. Three outs away from a come from behind dub. 2-1 home. Slice left side and foul. Two and two. Johnson will call time. Polancic steps over to the right side of the rubber to reset and rub the baseball in his hands. Dark black glove for Polancic. Sets up on the right side of the rubber. Working out of the stretch even though nobody on. Sets at the belt, kicks and delivers. Slider misses outside and a full count. Big tone setter pitch here for the inning. Full count, and the payoff pitch. Outside, ball four, leadoff walk to Johnson. Same thing happened to Polancic on Sunday against Washington. Started with a leadoff walk, then he hit a batter. He'll face another lefty here on the lefty lane, Hoover. He was 0 for, or 1 for 4 making a base hit back in the fourth inning. Polancic on the right side, delivers home. Hoover shows Bunt and pulls it back as it misses inside, 1-0. Bunt would be an interesting choice here with the Owls trailing by two and nobody out. The Unley Otters don't care that much about Johnson at first. They just want outs. 1-0 from Polancic. Low again, two balls and no strikes. Lansing takes a long walk back behind the mound and resets. 
Quickle in center field, shaded a few spots to his left with the Otters' middle infielder shaded a few steps in. Hoover takes off, pitch home. Green tosses down to second, not in time. Huge jump by Johnson. And Polancic actually, if he noticed, could have stepped off and probably gotten Johnson in a rundown. He, talk, he took off way before Polancic started his windup. Green's throw stood no chance. So Johnson into scoring position and Green out to work over the sides with Polancic with now a runner at second base. Johnson at second, nobody out here in the ninth and a 2-1 count to Hoover. The Otters leading 11-9. Lancic out of the stretch, sets at the belt. Beats back at second at Johnson. Comes home. Slighted right side. Back in and by the second baseman. Boasty tosses the first in time for the first down of the inning. Much needed first down for Polancic and the Otters. Johnson moves to third, but again, the Otters really don't care much about Johnson with a two-run lead. An insurance run in the eighth, looming large, and the Otters just need two more outs. Hank Zeisler is the batter. Top of the order for the all. Zeisler's 0 for 2 today, but he's walked three times. First pitch to the lefty batter. This is no, catches the bottom of the zone for a strike. 0 and 1. 94 at the knees to Zeisler. Oh one home. Driven high there to right. Baez looking up a few steps from the track, makes the catch two away. Johnson will walk home and score to cut the lead in half, but that's the second out of the inning. A pitch in the heart of the zone, Zeisler sent high into the air, but he got under it and plenty of room for Baez to make the catch and right. Two outs, nobody on for Tristan Garcia. The Otters an out away from a victory. The pitch home, right down the middle to Garcia, 0-1. Garcia, pinch ran for an injured Craig Massey after he was hit by a pitch. The lefty is 0 for 3 today. Palancic home. Garcia lines one down the left field line. This is a fair ball. Bouncing into the corner. Garcia will hustle around first, and the ball is bounced out of play. Myers holding up his hands. It skidded into the corner and bounced over the fence into the construction site down the left field line. Garcia keeps the game going, and the tying run now at second. Double down the line by the lefty. And Max Peterson, the Otters pitching coach, out to have a word with Palencic. Brian Fuentes coming to the plate. He's one for four today with a solo home run back in the fourth, walked in the first. One of the more experienced bats on the Yells this season, a 283 batting average. And he had three hits yesterday for Florence. Quick word, Max Peterson. His closer, Jake Polancic, looking for his 13th save of the season and a big Otters victory. Garcia at second, the tying run with two outs as the Otters lead 11 to 10 here in the bottom of the ninth and two outs for the righty, Brian Fuentes. Polancic at the bell, right side of the rubber, kicks and delivers. Breaking ball on the inside corner for a strike. 84 mile per hour slider, caught the inner third. Oh, one from Polancic. Slider outside misses, one ball and one strike. Garcia has pretty good speed at second, and with two outs, a ball to the outfield should score the tying run for the Yalls. Otters are outfield playing back, no doubles defense. 1-1, one, one. popped up high in the air on the infield. Yomar Reyes, the third baseman under the baseball on the edge of the line, looks up, makes the catch, and the Otters win it tonight from Florence. A four-run comeback for the Otters. They hold on in the ninth. And a huge win for the Otters, 11-10 to 10 this evening from Kentucky. A towering pop-up by Fuentes. Not an easy play for Reyes, who made the catch a few steps behind the third base bag. And what a sweet win tonight for Evansville. 
after a five run fourth inning for Florence, it looked like major trouble for the Otters, but they scored six unanswered runs before the one run by the Yalls in the ninth, and Evansville gets the 11 to 10 victory tonight here in Florence. Final totals, 11 runs on 12 hits, no errors for Evansville, 10 runs on 13 hits, three errors for Florence. And if the Otters get hot in this road trip, this is a game to remember. Otters hit three home runs and won an effort both by the bats, but also by the Otters' bullpen. And it started with the new lefty, Johan Castillo, came out of the pen for the Otters. It's a little confusing, but I believe he'll earn the win tonight. Two and a third scoreless innings pitch. Allowed it three hits with one walk and three strikeouts. Kevin Davis pitched two scoreless innings for the honors, allowing just one base runner. And then Jake Polancic, he always does it. Gets into trouble, it seems like, in the ninth, but finds a way to get a gutsy save and earns his 13th save of the season. The honors on a bullpen night. Not easy by any way for their pitching snap, but they find a way to get it done. And for the first time in two weeks, avoid dropping the first two games of a series. Even up this series at a game of peace, and a play for the series against Florence tomorrow evening. Schomburg and Lake Erie, they've gone to extras in Avon, Ohio. They're tied at four in the 10th. The Otters would love some help from the Crushers. Gateway losing tonight. The Otters move to five back of first place in the Frontier League West. If Schaumburg loses, the Otters go to just two games back of second place, and Schaumburg, Washington winning tonight remains five and a half back of the Otters, chasing them for that final playoff spot in the Frontier League West. Otters improved to 43 and 36, and they will go for their first road series win since early July tomorrow as they take on the Yalls in the series decider. Justin Watlin on the bump tomorrow for the Otters, 6-5 on the season with a 6.72 ERA, while the veteran righty Bobby Braybrand goes for Florence, 3-9 with a 6.35 ERA. Took 11 runs for the Otters tonight on 12 hits and three home runs, but it was enough for a big-time victory to snap a three-game losing streak against Florence and play for the series tomorrow evening. Great job by our credible Evansville Otters Digital Network crew and everyone here in the press box at Thomas More Stadium with Florence. I've been Griffin Epstein on the Otters Digital Network. We'll hope you join us again tomorrow, 5.30 Central Time. We'll be on the air, but until then, have a great rest of your night as Evansville takes down Florence 11-10 to tonight from Kentucky.